Howdy, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Toku Roundup. Yeah! I'm your resident Radiant Rider, Silver Maxis, and with us we have the adventurer of Ed, Gus Masterson. I am, uh, I am no longer the guts master than you knew. For well, now, I have. Uh, uh, for now, I am out of a- yeah, yeah, academics. No, and we have the Crimson Pfizer. Cure you, Crimson. Yo. We have our Riddle God, DLBot 2016. You are coming up. And we have a special guest with us, DJ Toku. Hello! Yes, how do we, how do we, we replace, replace, replace one of our members, replace, replace, replace one of the other Scotsmen. <laughs> well, because yeah. you can never have too much Scottish. Indeed. That's debatable, but, oh, but we'll, we'll, we'll just move on from that. Too much pink energy is dangerous, but Scottish energy is debatable. Basically... Flutter is currently at Everfree Northwest in Seattle, so yeah, we will be going on without him. Yeah, the lucky, lucky. Ba- yeah, the lucky bastard. He gets to meet Josh Scorcher and Silver Quill, and I'm stuck here in my room eating chicken, With, doing uh, a podcast. Oh, oh, where, where, where? Now, I, now you know how I feel. You know, when I can't go to certain conventions like Rangers, you stop and walk the con. Hey, at least you guys have been to conventions. We're stuck on the, we're on the other side of the ocean. Roger! Okay, apparently there's something going on on the Scott's bench. Not, not, not you, Dave, DJ, the other stuff. <laughs> we'll just call him Scotsman number two. Anyways. We have last well, word's so, keyword puzzle te- and oh. Technically, he's the Scotsman before the act, before the Scotsman. Huh. Okay. Anyways, so we have last week's keyword puzzle and uh. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, uh, guys, you think he's mad? Yes, I'm he- mad. He's mad. Oh, oh, uh, uh, we, should pro- oh we should probably explain it to, uh, it to, uh, D- EJ. Um, the last week's key keywords were, me- were, were, me- melody, rival, and primary. And the answer was Bosco from Go Kyger, and, uh, God damn it, yeah. I wanted to in uh, I wanted to get, do I wanted to give an easy answer, but the Albi made really good keywords. Up top up up top guts. Excuse me there for a second. The way you pronounced melody sounded like a guy in memory. Wait for no reference to the duck anyway. manga. Hey, jeez. Let's just move on before I strangle the Elbot. And like, Either... if you do, we can wait. I forget. Are we still doing that running gag where the Elbot has uh, that number of lives? I don't know. If I was doing that, I then I... if I was doing that, then I would, then I would, do... then I'd just pull an Eric Andre and do the Who Killed Hannibal thing. And I don't even watch Eric Andre. <laughs> Oh god, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> my my favorite rendition is this is this is also decayed fault. Of course it would be. <laughs> Anyways, news roundup. Start all. And starting up, up we've got a, a news from Shao Factory. Wait. Yeah, gentlemen, I think it's time we had the talk. The talk? Yes. What talk exactly are you talking about? What the talk about, about, about the birds and the beasts. Oh, ah! oh god damn it! God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Guts, 
That was genius. I love that. You still get a slipper, though. Let me find my Joker memory. Yeah. Right here, convenient. Ah. Oh my god! Flap! <laughs> Worth it! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that was, oh, that, was that, that, that was brilliant, guys. That was brilliant. Yeah, pat yourself on the back with that one. Hey. But, but um, yeah, people, people, we, people, uh, we've got uh, news from Jack Battery that we're not only getting the the, the next set and that it comes out of Time Ranger, but like, what's this? We're taking a step in the way back machine. These guys are gonna run straight into the enemy. Uh, what's DJ Toku? We can hear your back audio. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. What's up, Uh, what are you watching? Jurassic World's on in the background. It's not me. No. Uh, uh... Wait, I thought you said you were home alone. I was. Well, shit. Is there any way that you can that you can move to that you can move to some place more quiet? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try. It's uh, we don't want to get a copyright strike. I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one second. Let me uh, give me a moment. Just gonna mute this while I try and move some stuff around so you don't hear that. <clears throat> well, instantly we get demonetized. Not like we monetize oh. our videos. Oh, 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 relax, relax. I didn't even, I didn't even realize it was, it was Jurassic World. Girl, I just heard random people talking. Yeah, that's fair. Anyways, so yeah, apparently, apparently Shout Factory's going back to before the Zhu times and releasing Chojin Sentai Jetoman. Back to the past, so Jetoman. Jet, so jet, so jet, so man. Let's go, do 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 do. Get Jetto, Jetto, Jetto. Jet jet honest, now, I know what some may be thinking. Why choose Jetman? Why not go back to Go Rangers? Well, it's simple. Jetman is one of the most popular percent highs, highs ever. And it's, and if they're, and if they're going to, God damn it, it's Scotsman. God damn it, Scotsman. <laughs> Any, anyway, for those who are wondering, he just posted the the jing the uh, yeah. the gush at jingle for Jet Combat. The jet yeah. go, jet go well, in the sky. Jet to jet to jet, jet combat. combat. I still love the hero. I still love the hero of Kaga Kagayama did that for X days. Oh, that was neat. Anyway, Anyways. But, the thing is, Jetman is one of the most popular sentais and is a huge, huge fan favorite. People even consider her the best sentai. Yes. That is debatable, but able. But that just goes to show you how you how impactful Jetman was. And the, and then you also oh. can't forget those Gachaman fans. Gachaman. Gotcha, man. And, uh, and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then there was Gotcha Man Crowds. We don't talk about crowds. I liked Gotcha Man Crowds. Crowds wasn't that bad. It was flawed. It, wasn't, it just wasn't bad. Um, uh, because uh, as, uh, as we all know, Jetman took influence from Gotcha Man, and Gotcha Man took influence from Super Sentai, I think. Unless oh, I'm no, wrong. Dog cross -eyed. Um, no guts, because Gatchaman was, like, from the 60s. No, it was from oh, the right. 70s. Was it? Yeah. Okay, now you can say the... Silver, now you can say the Austin Powers quote again. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. And then there was that one time when she and Red was a Gatchaman, but talk about that? Um, I didn't mind yeah, that movie well, that much. 
Guts. Uh, Gatcha Man first aired in 1972, so Gatcha uh, Super Sentai took cues from Gatcha Man. So, so got so got so, so Super Sentai took cues from Gatcha Man, which then took cues from Super Sentai, and then and Super Sentai took cues from Gatcha Man again. And no, 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 no. Hi, I'm back. Thank you, thank you, Dalebot, for summarizing what I was trying to say. Actually, wait, yeah, Gachamon came first. But, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Jetman is awesome, and everybody loves it. We can't dismiss Gal Ranger, even though it is not oh, as impressive oh, yeah. as Jetman. The, 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 the problem that many people have with Gal Ranger is, if you've seen Wild Force, you've pretty much seen Gal Ranger, since Wild Force essentially just just Gal Ranger with a, with only a few minor changes. Well, it was basically the, it was basically the Samurai before Samurai. Only you know slightly better. Yeah, and I I personally consider Wild Force in my top five. So yeah, I do I do too. But uh, there's also a really big problem with Gal Ranger that Wild Force did fix. Which is what's that? The creation of Master Org. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I will admit, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that was pretty good. Have we all seen Gal Ranger? Uh, uh, I haven't no. seen Gal Ranger, but I am aware that, uh, that Wild Force took a lot of cues from it. I did, a however, lot of the- um, I did, however, get to see a Q&A panel of Gal Red. There are- oh. a- and there are yeah, a lot of things that, that Gal Ranger. There were a lot of things that Gal Ranger and, and, and Wild Force have, but it's easier to say it, the things that you know, Gal Ranger has that Wild Force didn't have, like have, oh, like the nomadic aspect, or the fact that you know, everybody refers to each other as their color instead of an actual name, or the fact that yellow, or the fact that yellow was a oh, guy. Yep. Well, the well, at that point, uh, Super Sentai hadn't, was still uh, going with the yellow oh, as a guy thing and one girl per team. Well, there are certain times when it's uh, when it changed. Yeah. A comparison of my one to make with these two shows, Gal Ranger is, I think, aimed for a slightly older audience, just a wee bit, as opposed to Wild Force. Yeah, I guess. I think that the whole... This miss anyone, but I think that the whole... The show ended as being a, a story told to a bunch of... Uh, actually summarizes it quite nicely. All things yeah. said. Uh, yeah, and the one thing that... And let, let's, let's not forget one of the best parts about Gal Ranger. The motherfucking theme song. Gal... I like... Do, I, do, I, do. I, Go. I personally like the one where the cast themselves are singing for the movie version. That was. Oh awesome. yeah! Oh yeah! That was oh, cool. yeah. oh yeah! And guys, Gal guys, Ranger. guys. Um, one thing real quick. This does bring up an interesting thing: the fact that this means that we are going to be getting that possibly we will get more, um, b- um, past Sentai teams before Zoo Ranger. Although that does bring a bit of concern, because you guys know what happens before Jetman. Five Man. Oh. Uh, what's the bad about Five Man? I've not seen yeah. it personally, but I've heard things. From what it's I know, uh, Five Man nearly killed Sentai. It's and not can... that bad. I've actually yeah, seen all of Five Man. It's not, it's not bad, that bad, it's just... but it's. it's Got flaws, and then and then the one after that, Turbo Ranger. No, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait, that was wait, Turbo. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that was Turbo Ranger. Hey, hang on, I can actually check real quick. Wait, uh, the Turbo, order. Turbo. Yeah, Turbo Ranger was before Five Man because it's Turbo Ranger was students, Five Man was teachers. That's yeah, the running I, joke. Yeah. 
Well, I meant I meant after in the sense of the one that they'd go to after Five Man. But but if they keep going past that, we'll get to Live Man, which is good. That's good. Where does Mask Man fall in all of this again? That's Mask bad. Man was before Turbo. Mask Man was before Turbo Ranger. Uh, Mask Man was before I... Live Man. I see here. I've seen parts of it, but I really want to see that show, if only for one reason, and I think Hyo might get this one more than you guys. What? Takeshi's Castle. Ah. No, Kyo. Castle? Eh, I don't know. Uh, I can't hear you, DJ. Are you talking about Mask Man? Did you... Alright, uh, fun fact. Um, back in the early 2000s, I think... There was a Japanese game show that was brought over to the UK and it was dubbed over by Craig Charles. You guys might know him from Red Dwarf. Takeshi's Warrior, Castle. Right? Yes, it's thank Takeshi's you. Castle. Is that with beat Takeshi in it? What I mean is that the mentor of the Mask Men was actually on that game oh, show. Oh yeah, Craig he was the Charles general guy. Yes, I don't know, I just... I practically lost my mind when I found that out, but I want to see this show now. <laughs> okay, okay, so if okay, so if we go if we go on reverse order, after Jetman will be will be five man and four five men and we'll and we'll be it'll be Tur- Turbo Ranger, then I, then and and Live Man. Then Mask Man, then I believe is Flash Man. Yes, Flash Man. And then and I believe Bioman is no, 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 no. Flash Man no, no. and Bioman kind of blend together for me. Yeah, they they look similar. Let's see here. Uh, hold on. Let's see here. It'll take us a while uh, to get to Go Ranger, though. Okay. Okay. Yes. Fla- uh, Flash Man. Okay. Yes. Flash Man. Flash Man was. And was that was before that. Before that was Change Man. Right, Change Man. And then Bioman. before Change Man was Bio Man. Then before Bio Man was Dynaman. Go Go Five. Wait, no, we already were at Go Go Five. You mean Goggle Five? Go- go- goggle, goggle Five, whatever. Go Go Goggle, say- whatever. Where's my DVD? Alright, and four quote goggle five there was, was And Dungeon so on. Denji Denjima, uh, Battle Fever, Jack, and uh, finally the Go Ranger. Yeah, we we kinda got it. So, sorry, you, you, you see what I was doing to remember them all is I basically have the Super Present I Melody 40th anniversary we want on basically what I'm going to do when what I was doing was basically going through to remember what the order of certain things was. Why don't you just so, look at the song? The song is, the song is sketchy. The song is sketchy and educational. It is educational. <laughs> uh, but it, but yeah, we're excited for both DVDs, just in different levels. Yep. Anyway, so, I'm go. taking this next one. Go, go right ahead. Uh, okay, so the Go On Journey uh, ten years after V Cinema has had its plot revealed, it, along with a strange new addition to the team, Kega Yellow. What? So, <laughs> it, just, okay, so just, just, in, just inserting in uh, Darth Vader. What? Actually, Silver, if you want, I can get you that clip real quick. Sure, go ahead. All right. Um, almost got it. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and and linking it to you right now. There you go. Thank you. What? I just lost the delivery of that line. It's like what? That's hey. a So uh, so yes. Kega Yellow, which is Kega Risha, 
in the place of Saki. And the valve does stay on the helmet for some reason. Oh wait, that's Kego Risha in a nutshell. I feel there is a joke there that we're just not getting. A cultural thing. And... But it turns out the guy arc are not the antagonists for the, uh, this film, but some new foes, the Eliki clan, uh, whose members uh, whose members include uh, Zontark, uh, who wait what uh, uh, who, who is uh, wait, wait 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 I I, 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 can, I can help you with that. With no, I can see. Sorry, uh, I'm on the Tokusatsu Network looking at the picture. Okay. It took me. Uh, Zontark, who's just a remodel of Hirama Kides uh, with Z's instead of uh, uh, light bulbs and uh, calculus. Uh, 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 Gear. Uh, no Noizun, who's. Well, I think might be an original costume, because I don't remember. Uh, because I don't probably, remember. Probably is probably is an original costume. That's usually how they do it with V cinemas. Most uh, likely. One original, okay. One, one original costume. One, whom to whom two, two, or, two or three reads. And uh, yeah. and Gear uh, and Guretsky. Gretz Gretzky. Wait, is it a hockey player or uh, the re uh, the remodeled version of the cleaning minister? Wait, what? It's a modified version of that cleaning minister uh, from the Go On Your Christmas episode. No, 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 wait, 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 I, I, I recognize that, that's, that's, we, we know him over states here by another thing, that's Kilobyte. The mighty Kilobyte. Are you, are you telling me that in the Sendai he was a cleaning guy? Really? You're not, you're not seeing really? the laundry? Really? And Vengex's first body was obsessed with calculus. Single laundry. I have not seen the laundry. Yeah. Go on, yeah. laundry is weird. The one thing it's I'm, a far different. The one thing that I'm wondering is she and the other and the other two ministers were wandering spirits by the end of Goanger, as seen in the Shinkenja crossover movie. How'd she get how'd she get back to into her body? Oh, magic. I don't know, but I'm assuming that uh, uh, the uh, that this uh, Visenma is going to have to give uh, some answers. Explain. Wait, 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 Explain, explain, or you shall wait. be exterminated. Hold it, hold it, hold it, actually, you know what? I think I got an explanation for, for Kega Yellow. It's Kega actually a spirit possessing Saki's body. Oh That's, my god. I don't, I don't think so, because as the, as the full plot summary reveals, ten years have passed since uh, the fight with the guy arc, uh, so it's roughly... In 20, uh, 2018, still, uh, peace has come to human world due to the Minister of Defense, uh, Noizum, uh, Noizum's isolation barrier. If this is the same character, I can't tell because weird words. Gotcha. Uh, Austin, do you have a guess who voiced Hiromeki Medis? Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at him right now. It's oh, Kazuya Nike uh, Nakai. Garo oh. from Q Ranger. Oh dear God. Oh right, he was. Oh right, Garu. Oh boy. I completely what? forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. Also, also, who do you think's better? Better. Kegoreshia or uh, Tanaya 7? Tanaya. Mm, Tanaya. Question. It, 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 you're going to have to be, you're going to have to specify what's the competition. 
because better can mean a lot of things. Eh, I don't know. And, but, and, but back to the plot, and, and the isolation barrier prevent it basically means the human world the human world is off limits or at least you know, go under had the uh, plane had various uh, worlds and planes but only a few of them uh, were uh, talked about and the severed connection uh, between the human world and engine world uh, or no wait, I think it was machine world it's been a while since I've watched Go Anger. Look at the world but where the uh, engines are from. It's Engine World. Thank you. The severed connection uh, between you uh, know in the Go Anger is uh, yeah. This has severed the connection between the Go Angers and the engines. Plus, there is also a note. There is a Sentai activity ban law. They'll be uh, so they'll be labeled as terrorists if they tra if they transform. I yeah. said, I, this 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 is a fucking conspiracy. Even the films are behind oh, that. You have you have no idea. Guess who's leading the charge on this whole thing? Golgum. Oh. It's Golgum. Golgum. <laughs> Golgum. It's Our Golgum. Old friend, Doctor Maki. Wait, what? Oh. What? Wait, what? Hang on a second. Hang on. Let me grab the thing. Let me grab the thing. It. Amidst, amidst the weirdness that I is go on, amidst the weirdness that is you know, the fact that this is a go on Jeremy cinema, a mysterious young boy, because of course we need a child to be in the in a, in a, in a movie. Yeah. Has come to the Goangers with Bear RV's cast, the yellow one, <laughs> uh, just so that way you're clear. Okay, I'm gonna make see. a prediction on that, Ted. So either others, uh, save him as he's being pursued by a special police, I'm pretty sure not related to the Pot Rangers. And for some mm -hmm. reason, the one who is standing in their way. Is none other than Saki, who has part who parted ways with the Goanders and is involved with the government's public relations office. The incident will drag the whole world will drag the whole world in, and how will it resolve the fate of the Goanders? Coming to DVD, coming to DVD and Blu-ray in September and twenty-sixth. Now, how is that? They have to help. Go ahead, DJ. Three off the top of my head. Human form of bumper. The uh, yeah. the, the engine that joined up with the Gokaiders. I forget his name. Speed or Mahalkan. Mahalkan. Okay, and the last one probably not gonna happen, but the shepherd in me is screaming. <coughs> Your child of uh, Iyu and Sosuke. Any of those is possible. Though, though I would bet the, the bomber for one, that's not as likely. The other two, yeah, probably. Plus, bomber was played by a woman, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I always refer to bomber with male uh, pronouns. I said played by a woman. Per, what is it? A guy himself? Yes, I'm aware. He's Although, yeah, yeah, but here's the same, here's, here's the same DJ. And if they went with that, they'd have to have 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 bomber for actress for basically the dubbing over the kid, and that'd be a bit weird. Yeah, have to have the same voice as a human. Plus, uh, uh, plus we've already had enough. Uh, plus, uh, I'm pretty sure this puts to rest the theory that Kegoreshia is possessing Saki. Especially since she already possessed Bomper. That was weird. Alright. Uh, I never got right. into the theory of possession, if only because the valve is on her head. Yeah, that's... It. Yeah, that's probable, but... I just don't think that it, there should be any... That Kega Reishia should be in anybody else. Phrasing boom, both guts is out. And on that note, let's move on.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have some sad news. Kenji Oba is currently in the hospital. Yeah. Now, now, let's be clear here. here he, he's not really, he, he's, he's not really in critical condition or anything. Thing, thing, but he was injured in an accident, and, and he's still in the hospital currently. Please, so all we can do right now is hope that is that hope that everything that he gets out of the hospital soon, everything checks out well. God damn well, it, cure you! Why are you? Another yeah. freaking Kenji Oba joke. God damn it, cure you! Kenji Oba effect number one seven seventy three. Three, three, death, here's Kenji Oba. My god. I uh, and Wait. It's Silver, you get used to the Kenji Oba facts eventually. Anyways, in That's other news, effect. in other but, uh, news, but we to also be perfectly have... honest, I would say that now is not the time for those Kenji Oba true facts. Mainly because, it, as much as we joke around, Kenji Oba is still a human. Exactly. True, true, true. But from all of us here at the Silk Roundup, we wish wish Kenji Oba and his family all the best and hope that everything goes well and they get through as well. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, and, and then in more news, we've got, well, unfortunately, some issues with Bernage as an actress, voice actress. Though, thankfully, it's not quite as bad. But she's currently suffering from corditis vocalis, which is a inflammation of vocal cords. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Especially since that is just painful. And just to clarify, those who watch Seven Deadly Sins, she is the voice of Elizabeth. I'm the hoping that from the enemy. I'm hoping that that. That her that her actress managed to re to record all of her lines for her bill before all this. So yeah, because they aren't gonna let her do her uh, her lines if they're not already recorded. Mm. Yeah, I'll be back in just a second. You go grab myself a snack. Okay. All right. All righty. Well, well, moving on so to the next so one. So for, oh, so yes. I'm surprised you're having Dave me. I'm gonna ignore it. I'm gonna ignore it and just erase. Uh, Dio, what did you see? Why I wrote? What? Like, hang on, let me see. It's so already erased. Already oh, now yeah, moving it's on. Together. Guys, focus. Right, 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 right. Okay, who wants to take now, Dashiko? I'll do it. Phrasing. I. I figured you would, Dealbot. That's even worse than doing Daisy on hard. Phrasing boom, both silvers out. <laughs> I was gonna say. <clears throat> wait, wait. Gentlemen, did you hear that? Hear what? It was a, a Zeltrak Molly and cried out kind of in its sadness and was then suddenly silenced. Anyways. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, um, for, you, for you, those of you who like Nanashika, oh, you'll either be, either be happy for her or very sad because of, yeah, she's married. Okay, I'm back. What a mess. We are uh, just now talking about uh, uh, Irina Mano, a.k.a. Nadeshko Misaki. She, uh, she, she, uh, was, she was, like, she, uh, actually... He wasn't recently married, Eric, but uh, has been married for for a little bit, at least almost a month. Hunts to soccer player Gatu Gatu Shibasaki. The ceremony took place on April 18th, and the registration and will be made official over the, over the summer. They met through mutual friends and developed a long distance relationship due to Shibasaki playing playing in Spain's La uh, League. Huh? The Liga. highest level of professional. La Liga, the highest level of professional soccer in the country. Which I'm guessing uh, is the league. That's like a pretty impressive. Yeah, he's playing. Yeah. In a, he's 
He's a Jap. He's a Japanese man playing in a Spanish soccer team, or well, Spanish there soccer league. Think. But and that, but that brings up well, but, but that, but with that kind of predicament, it brings up a Spanish Inquisition. Oh my I God! Really? really? <laughs> Another country? Yeah. I'd smack you for that one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> DL. Do you realize that can be a beating offense over here, right, Joe? DL, do you realize that we have two Scotsmen right now, and they could just as easily gang up on you, and I wouldn't stop them. <laughs> they, 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 they have to catch me first, and not only with, with that, I live in Georgia. <laughs> you know what, black hole. <laughs> this internet connection isn't reliable at the moment. What the hell? Uh... What just happened? My phone fucked up. Well, also... Well, also, um, I think that... I think that something happened on DJ Toku's side, too. Yeah. Alright, let's bring the Elbot back and let's move on to the next one. Alright, for those um, from us here at the Toku Roundup, we wish uh, we, we wish Arena, Arena Motto all of the happies and, and a long, happy life with... Uh, with her husband and yeah, all that stuff. Anyway, all, all we ask is all we ask is when she needs to is to be is to be able to come come back for have her tokusatsu because oh, because uh, we all love Tata Shiko. Yeah. Anyways, so something Garo related, similar to the Common Rider Cafe that was that was uh, made in Tokyo, which I still want to go to. We have a Garo Cafe. Who wants to cover this? I'm pondering the logistics of how that would work, because Kamen Rider is one thing, but Garo is the public cafe thing? I can't imagine how that would work. Well, to be fair... You know, let's yeah. let DJ Toku cover this, actually. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah why the hell not? Like, I didn't know about it until you just mentioned it, but... Oh. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just surprised that Garo of all things was getting something like that. Don't get me wrong. I love Garo. It's my bread and butter of Toku, but... Okay. Uh, are you on the dock, dude? Uh, no, sir. I don't think so. You should probably click on the dock. It's pinned in the, uh, in the pinned messages of, in the grinder. Oh, wait. We don't have it pinned for this week. I think it's in the link to it. No, way. Hey. Yeah, what? Uh, do, sure, you you move. There we go. You it's put picked. you you put. Oh, there we go. So yeah, just click on the pinned messages, DJ. Uh, give me a second. Um, saying it hasn't got anything yet. Hmm. That's odd. No, I think I look. At, I'm about to look it up myself. So, so you, so you don't. So uh, you see the link, but you don't see anything actually written in it. This should. That's weird. I don't worry about it. That is very strange. Alright, then we'll have somebody else cover it then. Uh, Scott's got some fun at you, yeah. Um, I know next to nothing about Garo. Me either. <sighs> Fine. Franchise, I just didn't know about this cafe stuff. 
Like it's, everything else. It's fine, actually... it's fine, it's fine. Hold on, I'll just copy I'll just copy paste it from the doc so you can yeah, read it. Yeah, that's fair actually. Yeah, we'll All we'll right. let DJ Toku cover it. He's the Garo fan, right. so why not? Everything hey, on the Garo oh, the I, I, There you I, go. I mean I mean I mean I mean I like Garo too, but do but I just need to catch up on it. The cafe opening. On Garo's project official Twitter, a special Garo theme cafe has been announced. Garo Makai Hall. It, is, it will be open for a limited amount of time in Area Q in Harujuku. It will feature drinks, food, special video screenings, armor and costumes on display, and exclusive merchandise on sale. Wow. Merchandising, merchandising. Where the, the real, real money, money is made. TV shows. Put the logo on everything. Garo the t-shirt. Garo the car and book. Garo the lunchbox. Garo the breakfast cereal. Garo the Garo the flames Really keeps the horrors away. The thing that caught my attention there was the armors. Like, if they've got all of them. I wonder what they're doing with, like, if they'll make actual live-action armors of the uh, animated ones. And uh, the, the Sky and Zen armors from Yami Watarasumono. Or Ooh. season number three, if you prefer. Who knows? Ooh, the, ooh, ooh, I know ooh, for a fact. I of the anime ones. That is an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah DJ. I would love that. Uh, season three getting a sequel with a gold storm and them going back to the live action suits. <laughs> when they brought Guy and Zen back from uh, for the movie uh, Fang of God, their armors were still CG. Hmm. What? Though I get, though I get the feeling that one of, that one of the the Makai Knights from uh, Yami of Tarasimono ain't gonna, gonna be coming back anytime soon because uh, 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 yeah, he got involved with the law. Yeah, I heard those charges were dropped actually. What? Oh. I know next to yeah. nothing about Garo, so I'm just gonna smile and wave. Uh, uh, no, 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 Silver, you're not getting it. The actor who played, played, was played for one of the Kai Knights in Yamiya Tarasimoto is the same one who played for, is the same actor who played for Yoma. Oh. I mean, a.k.a. Guy the Sky Bow Knight played by Sunomori Aoki. Yeah. Wow, okay. So, the charges were dropped? Yeah, they were dropped. Bullshit! I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, that ain't that ain't right. Right, the, right. The guy clearly was he was he was drunk and drunk and basically we did well do things that weren't exactly we we legal. So yeah, what the hell? Yeah, Japanese, it's the Japanese criminal justice system. That is like a whole hodgepodge of things going on there. It's hard to grasp honestly if you just want I, as far like, as i know you've learned a lot about the japanese criminal justice system by playing phoenix Wright. not a realization this is a real life example of the j hero justice system honestly, honestly let's be fair here people when it comes to celebrities getting in trouble with the law law the amount of loopholes are about as many as in swiss cheese but then again, but then again, that's just life. People when you get arrested, sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. Somehow. Sometimes it depends on how, depends on how, how much, how much dough they got in their damn pockets. Somehow, the prevailing theory that I heard, a few ranger in a few wood. What is it? Over, um, Tusk's actor got into a wee bit of trouble with the law and something something minor involving a bike or something. And I think that was oh, the reason I heard they never did that crossover. It's just he oh. hit something by accident and they just... No, it was nothing bad. It was just he left a bike unattended, which is apparently a bit of a frowned upon no-no. If that's the case, then wow. Any much, guys? Again, let's be I fair. I mean, granted, I'm glad we're getting another Space Squad movie, but... Really? That's the reason that crossover never happened? Heard. I'm not entirely sure of the legitimacy of it. 
But that's the prevailing theory that I've heard going. Anyways, moving on. Like, like, Flutter like would Flutter be, but, it, but he's not here. So, next yeah. up, speaking of people getting arrested... Oh, Kabuki, why? Why would you turn to the dark side like this? You already uh, turned yeah, to the dark side in, he, in the Hibiki movie. Yeah, I was gonna say, hey, didn't he already turn to the dark side in the Hibiki movie? Fair. Dude. But basically, he has been arrested for using drugs. Ooh. Don't do drugs, kids. Hmm. From what I've heard, they were just stimulants. So that's very much frowned upon in Japan. Yeah. I know. I mean, I don't think that anything that Japan does actually does let their actors away with. Too bad it wasn't hallucinogens. Then he probably would have been able to see why uh, Shirakura still has a career. Ooh. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, God. Good one. Good one. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah, he's been arrested, and that is very sad. The Japanese entertainment system is just crazy. Why have we been having so much controversy lately? First we have Ryoma's actor, now we have Kabuki's actor. Multiple reasons, so And then there was also the story, and then, uh, and then there was also the stuff up with, up with, up with, up with Orb's actor leaving the agency, he and, he and, he and, Ro, and Ryo Ababa being dropped from his fifth at the agency. What the hell's going on recently? He wasn't Seriously, dropped, he was, Japan, he was, what the hell? I mean, there he, is, you know, he wasn't dropped, he was put on a suspension. Right. There, and... Some new guy accident. in Japan actually commented on how uh, common Rider actors are getting arrested a lot lately. Uh, uh, I could pull up the quote. What quote? But yeah, show business. This is what it does uh, to you people. Uh, should not, uh, you know, Shinobu Saka Ingami, uh, who is an actor and regular panelist on the TV variety show Viking, commented on that uh, recent uh, string of actors uh, from Common Rider being arrested. What do you think? Uh, you need to be aware that while on Common Rider, you were on a drama series targeting children. Common uh, Rider is a gateway for actors, uh, comma, they forget this after graduating and become just another handsome guy. So now we're going take it too big for the britches. Exactly. But then, again, uh, but then again, we also have our fair string of actors who are like that in America and Scotland. That's fair. Fair points. Anyways. So what do you mean in America? I about the Japanese, Japanese in entertainment America. system. I can't... I can't Help but think about that one case with that one girl from AKB48. Oh yeah. Sticking my mind is just being complete and utter bullcrap. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I, mean, I don't. Basically, can I feel this one, Silver? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Or if it's the one I'm, uh, I think you're talking about, go ahead. All right. Um. See, the thing is, with idols in Japan, they've got these serious restrictions on them. And in most cases, one of the things, they're not allowed to date. I think reasons why this is a case, but I think it's most a case of selling the fantasy of it all. Uh, the members see. was caught actually having a secret romance, and the shitstorm that came after that was the stuff of Biblical proportions. The poor girl ushered like this tear-filled apology video for actually daring to have like some romance in her life, and she shaved her head. Yeah, I remember Gaijin Goomba talking about that one. I don't. I don't follow the Japanese idol industry thing. I just Either, apply. I, the, I just apply the Miss Monochrome test to every idol. I, I see. Except for baby metal. Jeez. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if the Toku Roundup ever gets too big for its britches, please shoot all of us. Actually, it, um, if we get too big for our britches, then we'll have trolls that will gladly just you know, pick up a gun and shoot. Yeah, or, I think or we could go for the more sensible thing and, 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 and let's let's eat a D D and the other basically here we we well help remind us 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 that us that we used to be not that big, which currently beats to aren't. Yeah. I mean, chances of me getting shot are less than likely where I am. But uh, but moving on. Well, Never Moving on, time. so you guys remember when we when we talked about the whole thing of auditions for uh, the Kamen Rider Build movie? They all got mm. used in one scene. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap! Wait, hold on. Speaking of the Build movie, um, did no one put in the document about the key theorem if we got of the movie clues of villain and writer? Wait, what? I don't remember anything like that. Wait, we have a what uh, now? We we have a uh, teaser. I heard, Suppose I, we have a teaser for the movie, though. Daniel, oh. show me now. Heard show it. me now. Uh, uh, okay, someone needs to tell him. Brb. Just for the movie villain writer is a little sketchy at best. Supposedly, it's a uh, dark cross. Dark cross. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I. Oh yeah, I did hear about that. The hazard trigger. No, Dark Cross. That's what I know. That's what I mean. Like that sounds what that would be. Using the haggers, like an evil guy with uh, his own cross dragon and a hazard trigger. So Vulcan the Grinder. No. Uh... I am currently looking in the grinder. There's nothing there. Isn't it, wasn't the build movie also supposed to have like a rabbit dragon form or something? Yeah. Got in the. Sento do the whole Common Rider double thing. Do, 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 da, 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 and, it, and it's not like the tech of Build is incapable of fusing two people together. I just watched Tasty Generation's final. Oh yeah. We need to do that. Um we need to do that as a TTR at the movies. Well it, well, Heisei Generation's final currently only has the overtime subs. We can watch the other episodes. So, but that's going to be the movie. The other one first TV Nihon. Overtime before the TV Nihon. I like to compare the two. I think overtime handles. I think overtime handles uh, dialogue better, but TV Nihon handles editing better. Well, flourishes TV Nihon put on all of their subs. Exactly. Those flourish. Sometimes those flourishes are nice. Okay. It's that personal oh, touch. And uh, I did not find on the laundry area. Plus, TV Nihon changes their font every year. Hey, Mr. Expediency. Anyways, Yay. so yeah, we don't know what the what the scene will be, but um, but we will know once the film releases on August fourth. So yeah, now on to Premium Bandai. Everybody, get your stuff ready. So what? I always dread hearing. So starting on <clears throat> oh oh, we got a two for here. We got Amazons and Premium Bandai. Yay! Uh... So, Premium Bandai news. Angry Scotsman, switch on. Switch on? SH Figure Arts, Crow Amazon, and Don't Amazon. Neo of. So, Neo Alpha, good. apparently with an F. <laughs> what? It's, it's spelled Neo A L F A Alpha. 
Not alpha. I'm bad. Alpha. Has unveiled, official, has unveiled the official images for the web exclusive figure arts of the Crow Amazon and the Neo Alpha Rider. They stand at 150 millimeters. So all and come with weapon parts for Neo Alpha and a set of interchangeable hands and are priced at 6,264 yen and 7,020 yen, respectively. I, okay, the one thing I just find hilarious is just how how Alpha is spelled with an F. Because, because poor literacy is Q. Now we move, now, for what's the reference? No, but. I got the reference. I got it. Linkara. Yes. Anyways. Moving on to... Uh, did, wait, did you oh, say how much they cost? Yep. 6,264 and 7,020, respectively. For those who want to know what that is in American dollars... Uh, hang on a second. I think, if I'm going to take a guess, 60, for, 60 dollars and about 69 dollars. Uh, what is it? It's... Would the exchange rate be for us? Is it a curiosity? Six two six four. Uh, fifty six dollars forty forty five cents, and then for British pounds, you guys use pounds, right? Yeah. Hang on a sec. There we go. Also, British pounds. Also, uh, uh forty one forty one ninety two pounds. Also, uh, silver. What do you Actually, think of the uh, either for the movie build, prior for uh, build? Oh, Ooh, that looks cool. And Wait, did you hear what's what? that? His belt. Is that a red repaint of the Cross Dragon? I believe it is. Yes. Well, shit. Also, a also DJ, he's got a cape. We got some, we got some rumors. We got some rumors earlier about the uh, the names for the. Velen Rider, Common Rider, Science. Oh yeah. Common Rider, Science. I'm sorry. No, just, just no. And supposedly, <laughs> Decade might be showing up in this movie. That I would be okay with. All right. Anyways, him for the next show. And next on the list, oh God, why are we, why are we seeing these plushies? Which plushies? <laughs> The you know exactly which in, plushies. In the port. What? We hmm. have the we have the shark plushie from the from the from episode four, I and like then from those. yesterday's episode, and from and then from last week's episodes, we have the bread bear and the pork <sighs> potato. Why? I, I'm, I, Why? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, but I. I, 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 I can't look at the tail thing because when I look at that, it reminds me of Professor Pig from Gotham. Ay, ay, ay. And if you, and if you know how fucked up Professor Pig is, is, is you know, oh, why I'm scared. I know. Anyways, as for the official names Give of these guys, the we have Samera. I see what you did there. You know, Same, which means shark, and then I don't get the uh, raw part, but whatever. A minute, guys, I'll be back. Just need to... Alright. Yeah. Um, Fua Pan, Pan being the Japanese word for bread. And then Jagaton. And once again, why? Why? The, the, answer, the answer is simple, Silver. <clears throat> You've got to have money. Uh... Ay, ay, ay. Oh, well. I know somebody who would want the shark. Even if they don't watch uh, Super Sentai at all. I feel that they would love the shark. Who? Friend of mine. You wouldn't know them. Okay. So, but yeah, uh, I was I was gonna make a jumping the shark joke, but nah. 
I still don't get these two plushies. The freaking... Why is your head made of bread? And why is your head a potato? What is going on? Life is going whoa, on. Whoa, 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 hold on, Silver. They're a potato. Maybe they have, maybe they have bladdles. What? Oh, hold on, Silver. If their head is a potato, maybe they know GLaDOS. God damn it, DL bot. <laughs> uh... Let's just move on. They're 27... They're, they're 2,700 yen each. Uh... They'll be released in July. I don't care. Sentai, and then why? We get to the, then we get into the... Monster in the room. Yep, and of course, Cobra Commander, or Cobra Commander, if you will. Corporate Commander. I, I meant to say corporate. I'm sorry. All right. It, it, Silver, since you said that, Diablo gets to make the joke. No. No, 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 no. Do, do it. Anywho. Corporate Commander, if you will. You need it! Senpai, notice me! Corpy, it's Senpai! Will he notice me? Uh, fine! There! There! Senpai noticed you! You happy? Yay! Thank you, Corpy. Anyways, Kyori, you want to go over this shit show? We have SH Monster Arts Godzilla Afsu. This is the one from the new movie, right? Yeah, the big massive one. The thing yeah, is, the one, the, one, is the, thing. the one with the new Mecha Godzilla, which I've seen a, seen a pic, see the toy image of, images of, of Mecha Godzilla from that movie, and. Oh, oh, that's Deep hurting. That's a lot of lame. Deep hurting. Yeah, deep hurting. Deep hurting. Let me see if I can actually no. find, find an image of an ass. Godzilla Earth is basically a Godzilla that lived for mil millions of years and grew to about the size of a planet. So, was he the original Godzilla? We don't know. Uh, who remembers? But, okay, so, this Godzilla... <sighs> it turned out, uh, what was the biggest Godzilla on record before this guy? I think it was the Shin Godzilla? Uh, yeah. He just went around and said, Bitch, please. This Godzilla is very big and very, very dangerous. And he could be yours for a total of 11,880 yen. No silver, compared to most other premium band items, this is fair. Might I remind you, rings for 16,000. Okay, okay, okay. I found okay, I found the images. So, Silver, I'm gonna warn you, what I'm about to show you is incredibly, incredibly lame. Like really lame. Oh god. You ready? Ready. Alright. Just post. And Um, there, there we go. Right. And there. Here we go. What is that? That's my Godzilla. Oh, God. Now you see what I mean, huh? And he's supposed to be the good guy? Uh. Maybe? Hey, I just hey, 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 hey. That just looks like 
A dinosaur with knives. Wait, you mean that mom lost her superior in the Samurai Cyber Squad? Yeah. Huh. Guess it kind of does. Let's just move on, shall we? Dale, are you sure this isn't, this isn't those light weak uh, models for the monsters they're going to be fighting in the upcoming anime? Uh, no, this is definitely, no, this is definitely official. It's, oh, it's the actual vinyl toy. It's real. Hey, caramba. Anyways, that should do it for the, for the news section. So now, we move on to <sighs> All the All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, just ah, in time. We were just about just to start the episode. Uh, sorry, I had to play a game of musical chairs of rooms. My mum just got back. Also, to quote Aeon, right on time. Okay, I've never played Castlevania Judgment, but I love Aeon. Castlevania to begin with. Huh? I've never played Castlevania to begin with. Sorry. Same, but... But still, it's like... Aeon is so cool! What about Alucard? Oh yeah, but Aeon has time powers! So wait a minute, Aeon, Aeon he's he's been been been. Anyway. Yeah, I bought you. <laughs> I get the joke! So to be fair, it's Eon, not Aeon, but yeah. No, 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 it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Anyways, let's move on to the episode. Kamen Rider Build, episode 35. A.K.A. Holy shit, the world's gonna die! No, 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 It's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. And I'm feeling fine. And I'm feeling fine. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, the arse fuck. G'day, everybody. Yep. Doomsday is now upon us. Oh, oh shit. There goes the planet. Superman. Exactly. No, no, no. In seriousness, episode 35 The Trump Tower of Destruction. <laughs> oh, no. Black Hall. No. No politics jokes here on the roundup. No, no, no deal, but... I say I've, to you, uh, no thank you, da. No deal, but to, to continue on with the joke, what's that yeah. coming out of the ship? A what, though? Oh, oh shit. shit. There goes, there there goes the friend. Uh, let's, let's continue. So, leaving off where we last left off, um, Sento ends up going in, however, obviously he's not at full power, and... Well, Evolt just gained a lot of power by controlling Ryuga. So, yeah, Sento gets his ass kicked. So what, does that make uh, Ryuga a rejected Yu-Gi-Oh character now? God damn it. Oh my god. Basically, yes. <clears throat> but yeah, um... Meanwhile, they find Soichi's unconscious body lying on the ground. So that's interesting. So, uh, uh, both like he won't say I need a tune up. That makes a question in my head. Despite Evil leaving Soichi's body, do you think, physically speaking, his body has still been put through the nebula gas process? <laughs> or he still might have the ability to become bloodstock in a future crossover or something? Oh, mm. we, interesting. Uh, oh, it's that's... possible, but it's possible. But the thing is, we we don't we don't know enough about evil species. If we if we know for a fact he ain't he ain't Martian, he's some sort of parasite. I, but oh dear, I just had a torn air thought. Well, we don't know for certain if he's if he's uh, if he's not Martian. Can I uh, speak up on that? This this might be a bit. Um, what's the policy on spoilers? Uh, don't spoil the future episodes. I'll keep my memory. Yeah, don't spoil that. Yeah, so don't talk about episode 36, even though it's already out. On that one, then. I should note that we 
have that we that we're recording this on Sunday because I had previous engagements yesterday, so now we're recording it now. And what about my engagements? Oh yes, your engagements were also a thing. But I I, I just had a thought. Um, what if Evil Bolt's able to pull, pull pull a baby from Dragon Ball GT? Oh, good <clears throat> lord! What's a GT? Ooh. What's a Ryuki? Who's oh, oh, okay, okay. Let's be fair here. You your, know, your GT might have been bad, but maybe we're one of the very few, few okay. good things about it. He nearly won. Yeah, okay. What I what yeah, I watched that is it, it didn't bother me. I gotta I gotta be on TV like. Six. Yeah, but I was, I was making a little joke. I know. Okay. My big question of the episode is why does he vote against the Yuga the Granny here? Good question. So, the answer is yes. Brilliant. I've Come seen, on. I've seen clips. Anyways. So, so Sento and, and Kazumi realizing that they should probably get some backup, and there's only one full bottle left, which they which they realize is in the possession of Gentoku. I so, honestly like this. I honestly like this little nod to continuity. Yeah, I almost okay. forgot about the fact that Gentoku who, who still had had the Phoenix full. Yeah, totally. Can I, just, can, I, can I just say something? I'd love to see like a cross Z style rider based around that particular full bottle. Ooh, now there's. I'm pretty like, sure like a, if Gentoku. Nice. I'm pretty sure if Gentoku had a, uh, you know, had a, uh, the bill driver, he probably would uh, assume uh, Phoenix Robot as his default form. I think Ooh. that one would go with Kazumi, actually, since he has the robot Splash Jelly, which is his outright, his only yeah. ability. We would get something different, but that's well, another spoiler well, thing. Well, Crocodile and Rimokan do it is a best match, but Hazumi fits the robot in full bottle, while Gentoku fits the Phoenix full bottle, because it, why do, does he need Crocodile again? Uh, cracked up. Yeah. Fill bottles also, uh, in the Splash Driver. No, I mean, also, what's uh, the significance of him, of his animal being changed from a bat to a crocodile? That one. The Remocon Brothers. Oh, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Like a flying thing does. Maybe like a Phoenix. Does. Like a phoenix. I'm sorry, I had to make a reference to Fall Out Boy there. Oh, I love that song. On oh, oh, excellent job. Phoenix. What does this have to do with Gundam Unicorn? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I get it. it, it However, so while, as they're so planning while our favorite, it, So while our heroes are talking, <laughs> Evil is cool. like, nice party you got there. Mind if I... Crash no, it. No, 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 no. Yep. I, no, let me take his guts. Nice party you got here. Be ashamed some more to crash it. Oh, so and then he no teleports everybody to the Pandora Tower. Except me, Sora. And no, the Martian Queen's allowed. Queen's allowed. Also, 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 Evolt. Who do you think you are, Albert Wesker? Who? From I got Evil. it. You have not played any of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, have you, DL? I have! Well, then you remember how crazy powerful Albert Wesker is in that game. Or in NBC3. It's been a while since I played that. Mm -hmm. but, but, our, mm, but our two heroes and Gentoku... Yeah. Mm, transform and... Kazumi and uh, Gentoku are blasting off again. <laughs> okay, that was uh, a funny part of the episode. Oh, Just wow. thinking wait, 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 wait. so hard. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait, hold up a second. Hold up a second. Rewind, rewind. 
didn't Kazumi have a wee moment in this episode? Oh yeah, we're talking about that. He oh, shot yeah. me in the dick. Why? Why? Why did he shoot me, me in the dick? dick? I think uh, DJ's talking about when he tr when he tr he tries to comfort me, Sora. Oh, oh, all, oh all, yeah. the, all the innuendo, all the innuendo. Robot in jelly. <laughs> if you say anything, DL, I'll shoot you in the dick. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Gut stick. Robot in grease. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. No, it's Boomer. Fun That's fact like that, I, that I've remembered. Do you guys know why Bang. he's actually called Boom. Kamen Rider Grease? Also, um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny that uh, Kamen Rider Rogue's colours are purple since... It's since his belt says, Oh, uh, Star Platinum's one of the main colours is purple. Oh, jeez. Anyways... You, 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 were, you were saying, Bang, in DJ? Do you, know, do you know why he's actually called Kamen Rider Grease? Why? What are the kanjis in his name? Uh, one of the kanji that's in his name, what? Kazumi's name, it's Monkey. Oh, and he's a mechanic I get it. Raider, it monkey. monkey. Okay, that's kind of clever. Raiders yeah, have I mean. the, the animal theme in their name. Sento is Rabbit, Ryuga is Dragon, and uh, Kazumi is Monkey. Monkey! So but what, but what does Gintoku have? Got an entirely different, like, uh, reference in there. No animal. Um, actually, if you use, if you mix up a human or Gintoku, you can get Komori, which is bat. Ah. Oh. Doesn't I really heard, work now, but... I mean, unless he oh, goes back to do, using Night Rogue. Or Mad Rogue. No, 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 remember. Uh, I've got a joke for Nightwolf. I've got I've got a joke for Nightwolf, by the way. Okay. And type Batmobile. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, you, so you, you, you know, weirdly enough, there is actually fan art of that. Moving Hazard on. Kaizoku Russia. Yep, we get Hazard Kaizoku Russia returning, and we get the and we get Hazard Key Dragon. In regards to that, yep. why isn't he lying on the floor screaming his head off in a combination of hazard and dragon? Yeah, that's fair. Then either, either one of those is enough of a problem for him to start off with. But both? That's like well, I, 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 I sort of equate this to essentially this being a result of out of uh, Sento basically, basically increasing his hazard level and basically building up tolerance. Tolerance for the dragon fuel bottle if he's not used it since before Ryuga first became Cross C. You need to expose yourself to something to build up a tolerance. Or the, uh, or maybe his hazard levels increased. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but to be fair, uh, the, uh, but the, uh, to be sorry. fair, hazard is a bit is a bit more overpowering than I mean, the dragon fuel bottle. So. Still, though, seems still seems a wee bit suspect to me. Indeed, indeed. And meanwhile, yeah. unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Evol is able to, or Evol is able to get the upper hand, and thus we get. Uh, oh, no good. Silver. Wait a minute. I need to. We need to make mention to something. Uh, you vote good at impressions. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That, yeah that, all that this trick in the book. Using. Yeah, no, he, using. Uh, what part we, say? We know he's good at impressions from the get go. Oh, and we should. He's been doing Soichi for ten years. Yep. Also, fool you. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was evil. 
That was so evil. I. And then someone that just struck me. Oh, sorry. Ne okay. Okay, this show is getting into rather Lovecraftian territories to what it's doing. What was the last Common Rider show that did that? Uh, Gaim. Gaim. And beings of that power are known to transgress dimensions. Now, as we know, a uh, build happens in its own little universe, but what's to say that a certain DJ hasn't been here? Oh, shit. Oh, I see where you're going. You do. Oh boy. I've heard, I've heard this theory popped around before that Evox could have a connection to a previous species that's had their go at the golden fruit, you know, like the overlords. Um, I suppose a different oh, theory is of um, the same you... species as Sagara. Hold on, oh, repeat shit. that. Um, repeat that, uh, I didn't quite hear that. Um, DJ, funny you should mention that, but see on the official, see on the wiki page for Bloodstock, they do make a comparison between him and Sagra because they're both snake fiend. Uh, anyway, DJ, what was that you were saying before? What was your theory? I didn't hear it. Sorry, uh, my theory is, okay, both this show and Gaim have gotten into some rather Lovecraftian overtones in the latter half of their shows yeah. by the association of both and Evolt. Now, one of the key yeah. aspects about Lovecraftian nightmares is that they exist at all points in all realities. So what's to say Sagara hasn't entered into Bill's universe? Because we know Bill's happens in its own universe, separate from the rest of the mainline Kamen Rider shows. It's something similar. What if instead of him being like evil Kota, which I've heard float around a wee bit, what if he's from the same species as Sagara? They're both actually, snakes. actually, actually, you, you, you know what? I propose another theory. What if Evolt is Sagra's counterpart in this universe? Yeah, I mean, suppose. Yes, yes, they're different people, and yes, they have different sort of sort of ideas and motives. But as we saw in oh, in oh, in Hasty Generations, as final, I know that. That doesn't, doesn't really, really always raise me mean that a counterpart is exactly the same as in other dimensions. Right, actually. Yeah, I, Mogami I Kaisei in, in, in the uh, build uh, world uh, was uh, calm, composed, and uh, 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 very plain, while Mogami Kaisei in the regular writer universe kept saying funky. Funky! Okay. Going off on that whole counterpart idea, what if he is Sagara's opposite number? Like, despite all the things Sagara does, at the end of the day, his entire motivation is the progression of societies. He wants them to be better. He wants them to evolve. Evolve, ironically enough, giving his name, wants the exact opposite. He wants the death of everything. Earth to Mars, now Earth. How many other planets has he done this to? Fair. Well, that Fair. One, Fair point. Well, that would imply Fair that... Point. Well, I'm under. Well, I haven't finished Gaim, but I believe that DJ Sagara is a, a cosmic force of creation. But I don't think Evolt is at the level of being a cosmic force of destruction just yet. Planetary force of destruction, yes, not cosmic destruction. I, I, I think Evolt should Sagara. be a factor of it too, but still. I mean, and as we've shown, like, it's not like they've completely thrown out continuity. I mean, again, AC Generation's final. Guess we saw who came back. Frickin' Foundation X, which made me squeal. Yeah, yeah. Which, essentially, which essentially does mean that, the team that while Foundation X does not exist in Bill's universe, it's possible that their equivalent could be not a heavy industry. That actually makes sense. Gami did go and work for Namba after he was fired from the Toto Advanced Physics Institute. So again, yeah, you're right. That makes sense. Some people say well, it's. Some people say it might have been Faust, but I doubt it, since Faust was started, started by Gentoku, who who and wasn't around as long. While while Namba, Namba Heavy Industries has been around for longer. 
Uh, yeah, let's be fair. Faust was honestly kind of a red herring. Like, they were more or less the public face for all of Namba's dirty dealings. Because they were... And it, we, we initially well, thought... Technically, uh, well, technically, Faust was, uh, Faust was sponsored by Namba Heavy Industries. Faust was, was essentially, Faust was essentially a spin-off of, of, of Namba Heavy Industries, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Plus, Namba yeah. Heavy Industries... Yeah, most likely does have public dealings, you know, unlike Same. Shocker or Foundation X, who keep themselves in the darkness. That's the thing. I think Foundation X probably does have public faces. Remember, they're not this... Like, traditionally, they're not the organization like Shocker trying to take over the world. They're arm stealers, which is, well, a wee bit morally suspect, still perfectly on the legal up and up. The ones that have wanted to conquer the world have always been stated to be renegades that have gone against the organization. The Foundation X doesn't want to rule the world, they just want to make money. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I actually, actually activate um, Tom and Jerry. We've got to have money. Actually, I honestly think, think I have a different theory on what Foundation X's ultimate goal well, Actually, can we? How about we save most of this for when we have as a weekly topic Heisei Generations Final? Well, we have to do that for 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 TTR movies. Also, where's Silver? I'm here. I'm here. Okay, 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 okay. Good. Sorry, uh, I, was, I was just being listening so in. Quiet. Mainly because Namba Heavy Industries, their main role in this is they don't want the Pandora's box opened, because if it's opened, then. Uh, Bye bye Earth. They want uh, the Pandora's box <coughs> as an energy source. And Namba is also a group of arms dealers. Honestly, the honestly, if you if you think about how Namba operates, operates with also with Foundation X, it, I you honestly you get a better picture of what their ultimate goal is, and it's something that you, that. Has been seen before in another video in another Earth first series, or rather a video game game, game genre. One word: the Patriots. Oh shit! Ooh. They are the Patriots. And I honestly believe that their ultimate goal is essentially to make create a world where essentially the military is to everything. And they basically stay, they stay rich the rest of their life. Okay, also, so, also, guns of so, the Patriots. Uh, uh, it's a visual pun. A pun gun, if you will. Ha, I got that reference. So, basically, they're, go they're, they're going to create an economy that fries on war, so they're going to put nano machines in people. And if you don't have them, one of the guys is going to be shitting all like hell. <laughs> Your plot, I'm not in the mood for my brain to go explode before we watch uh, Lupin Ranger at night. I'm going to need all my faculties intact. Anyways, so yeah. After that tangent, all the full bottles are in place. And thus, the Pandora box is opened. The world is And this is where we learn what exactly the Pandora Tower is. It's a black hole generator. Ladies and gentlemen, when I first saw this scene, the scene that is currently in that is currently in the in the weekly episode picture, I just kept saying, "No, God, no." Well, I well actually, I saw a clip from. Yeah, this week's episode, episode 36. Dad, don't spoil! Don't spoil! I'm just saying that it may not be a black hole generator. It may just be... Uh, power-ups. Uh, so that the Pandora It's a doomsday device, obviously. Allegory to the Tower of Babel. Yep, and yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, the doomsday clock is set. The world is doomed. I think we can play the But we'll see what happens next episode. Ne what, what happens ne next, next episode. Next, 
next steps, next steps are, are out. Next week, however, ever we ever we see that you know, that for not not is intervening yet again, and and she and she basically says that evil must not reach its final form, and we see Sento working on something, and we see not they from Devil May Cry. No, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Silver-haired uh, Sento. Actually, I think it's white here. Whatever. Wiggy is wake to ever wake. Also, um. But I so, give this episode. I give this episode an A, just a straight A. Agreed. B plus. Eh, I give this a straight A plus. I'm scared to see what's gonna happen next. We're reaching the end game here, folks, and we're only like three fourths of the way through the series. I'm pretty sure we're uh, yeah, by uh, by June. We'll have the final form. Yeah, most likely. Because we, we're reaching final form territory. Yeah. And, yeah, Bell and... Is... Uh, and, and, here's, and something that I did point out uh, before in a previous, previous episode is... If... If uh, Evolve got his... Aunt, uh, Aunt, 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 uh, Evolve dragon from... From possessing Ryuga, how do you boys think he's going to, going to get that evil rabbit? Oh boy. Here we go. You don't need to be sure to figure out how this one's going to go. Yeah. The question is, how did he do it? We shall the, only see. He could, the only reason he could possess Soichi is because he touched the Pandora's box and awakened it the first go around. And the reason he could possess Ryuga is that, technically speaking, Ryuga is in fact his physical body. Well, well DJ, DJ, here's the that. thing. Ryuga is the body. That. What does Sento have? Brains. The brains. Oh, good point. And then Lupin. we'll see what happens with with Black Hole. But yeah, let's move on to Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. Where... Can one thing quickly, Silver? Yes, go just ahead. On this. Can we just all agree that, relatively speaking, in regards to some of the other shows, Build is a relatively dark show, all things considered? It is Again, a dark show, speaking. but it is a very good show. Uh, yes. But my point is, well, we have to... all our writers are going to still be alive by the end of this, because... Because he's not getting any power-ups, Kazumi's got a pretty big target on the back of his head. Well, he, yeah. here's the, here's, here is my defense for that, for that uh, Matt DJ. We know he's going to be in the movie, and we know the movie takes place after the series, so he has to survive. If anything, <laughs> I think there's someone else who has a bigger target on his head, and it's, and it's freaking Gentoku. Yeah, probably. Fool's well, death, as TV Tropes puts it. But we think? will... Oh, I thought death. we were talking about Luke and Ranger versus right, Pato Ranger. Right, yeah, let's right, move I, on, guys. Sorry, I just wanted to get and that out. And this is a big Pato Ranger-themed episode, which is weird. The Luke and Rangers barely appear in this episode. And unlike but, something but, like, say, episode 11... Yeah, they... Yeah, this, this, is, this, is, a, this is a serious eh, episode. Or sl as serious as... Eh, episode as you know, ten, tens you know, episodes can be. Yeah. Well, so we start in with an investigation in the mountains with some with some modified Potter and Megabos. You know, when I when I looked at these, I'm kind of getting flashbacks to Kamen Rider Drive. You too, huh? Yeah. So what? Here. They've got Rena working in the research and development. Holy we shit. wish. Well, yeah, that'd be interesting. She's not it. No. Hello, yeah. nurse. Moving on. Anyways. Turns out, turns out that our favorite coppers are investigating because a field trip has been canceled, and Keichiro wants to do his part in, for the kids. Keichiro likes kids, but kids don't like Keichiro. That's a shame. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where we actually get at the one point that I'm pretty sure broke Cage goes hard in this episode where he basically he talks to the kid who is wearing an adorable oh oh oh, oh, oh Lupin red cape cape uh, Lupin, 
on sword and uh, a, I believe it's a paper craft to uh, have BS changer, changer. And basically, when he when he makes the cover skin, he says, and, "Yeah, and grab me." And he essentially says to Keicho, "I like the Phantom Thieves better." Oh, poor Keichiro. Watch, 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 watch this guy. I see that he's a smart kid. He played Persona watch, Five. Watch this. Watch this guy. I see. look closely. You can pinpoint the part where his heart rips in half. And there. Mm. My first response when Keichiro smiled, it was pretty basic. Kill it with fire. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My response. Do that again. Ever. Yeah. I uh, that, I, I find it own... kind of sad the fact that the Pass Rangers don't really get too much respect, which is a shame because I like the Pat Rangers, but nobody seems to give them any respect. Not even well, RBT gives them respect. Uh, um, In defense uh, of the Silver, here's the, so, so, so Silver, Ace. here's the thing. Spade Ace, Ace likes, likes the Pat Rangers better. He, uh, in... To the, the point of ranting about the Pot Rangers in eh, episode three. Ah. I've got an in universe reason for justification why the people prefer the Phantom Thieves. Remember, they stated in the first episode that the Phantom Thieves have been operating for an entire year. That means they've had time to build up, you know, public clout, and they've technically, by definition, been the one protecting them from the Ganglar, while as far as they know, the cops have been sitting on their asses eating donuts. Yeah. And not only, that, and not only that, remember one simple thing. Japan is not as fond of their police system. And also, what came out, what came out like a year, like a couple years before this? I don't know. Persona, Persona 5. five. Phantom Thieves are big in Japan at the moment. Yeah. And that is, big. And that is why I'm listening to the original... Yeah, stories of Arsene Lupin. In, uh, so that way I can understand uh, uh, the majesty of uh, Lupin and, and, and yada yada, but this is a cops episode. Yeah, yeah the Japanese that's love that's Lupin that's more than the French do. What you're gonna yes. do? What you're gonna it also, do? It also oh. helps that from what I've listened to, the stories are uh, the stories in the original magazine, or at least the audio versions, because that's what I listen to. Uh, they placed sort of like uh, in a much older uh, Shonen Jump, anyways, or at least that's the model. Anyway, so in the meanwhile, we have um, Dogranio talking to. Another one of his subordinates. Uh, hang on, let me find his name. Let me find his name. Togano. Togano. We threw out his name! Sorry. Wait. Wait, hang on. I recognize that face. Zatanna, is that you? Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, it's Togano. Or, or, I yeah, or or Togano is, or is, or as we also call him, Ultraman Zoidberg. Exactly. Yay! Recognition! One for you. So for, the, for the so for the rest of this podcast, we're just gonna call him a uh, uh, Zoidberg. Anyways, so yeah, um, Togeno is uh, Zoidberg. I'm gonna say whatever the hell I want. Okay. Anyways, so Togeno has a plan to basically kill a cop. Revenge kill a cop, to be specific. Well, what? Well, not really revenge. Not like revenge kill. It's more he, or oh. he's basically doing, be doing it to not only impress Dogranio, but also to help another gang or out. Oh right, the other guy has the revenge kill. Yep. Which the other guy's name? Hang on a second. Let me find his name. Uh, he yeah, is. Just call him. Yeah, yeah, just just o- call him. Odordo or, or Dodo Max Maximov. Maximov? He's a member of the Crush bro- Brothers. Yep, the Crush Wait, Brothers, so he, in which... He's, he's, he's related to Black Widow? Related to Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch? Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Crash? Wait, hold on. Crush Brothers? That's Crush not right. One of them needs to be, one of them needs to be orange. Crush Brothers. 
Uh, Jimmy Nihon says, spells it as crash, so there. Overtime. Anyways, and his, and his piece of the Lupin collection is actually special. Because it's a versus vehicle. Verse machine. Yeah, it's I know a, a little trigger, trigger machine, but is it trigger? Machine? Yeah, first vehicle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. That was my bad. Um, in which he has the trigger machine Doril. Go ahead and make all of your uh, make all of your Gurren Lagann dr- jokes now. And his this brother. This is the sheep. This is this the is... sheep that will pierce the heavens. God damn it! And his brother. I'm good. And it. And it. And it. Anadar, Anidara Maximov was, or used the, or had the trigger machine crane. However, Wait, wait he, Silver? Silver? Yes. Go ahead. I want, allow me. I'm, I'm hoping we can see a lot of Anidar and, and see him prosper and succeed and... Yeah, he died. He got nah. crushed, he got well, crushed you were supposed by to say- Tato Kaiser in... In episode, episode four. four. So you yeah. You were supposed to say you were supposed to make a sound effect. Splash. Like squish. Squish. <laughs> and I believe this is the first time where a monster was defeated because they stepped on it with the mecha. Holy shit, you're right! This is the first time that Sentai's ever done this. Well, 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 well we we can't be entirely sure of that. We haven't seen every single Sentai, but recently, yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah. We'll just say within the last the 10 oddest... years. Yeah. Well, I guess the oddest flashback to Gundam Seed Destiny in that moment, for anyone who's seen that show, you know what I'm talking about. But sure you. The, fact that, the fact that just, I find it hilarious, just Pato, Pato Kaiser just randomly steps on the guy. <laughs> Which also I will admit, I do, I, I honestly do like that, oh man. My God. It's a good nod to continuity. I can't help but think if in real life you'd actually, see that on, on, you'd actually see that happen far, far more often in an actual Sentai mecha battle. Oh, you oh, more likely. Because some poor civilians will be too dumb. I ain't getting out of my house. I don't care what the government tells me. Also, also, the person who voices Annie Dara, um... Kenny Kenichiro Matsuda. He's no he's no stranger to vo- to voicing monsters because he voiced um he voiced the Cambrima in uh Kyo- in Kyoyujer, the Sugor yeah the Sugorman in uh in Gokaiger, and Yokai Moku Mokuren in Oh Episode God no not the- that one. What the hell? He's a giant keyboard. What the hell? No, yes. Really get... yes. Yes. Get appropriate that's the one from the that's the one from the RPG episode. Oh god. <laughs> I think the appropriate response is no not this one. It says no not this show. Oh 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 and oh and uh, silver, here's the thing. Yeah. In that episode, Moku, um, Moku Ren can actually inflict status effects onto the, the, the ninjas. Also, Dialbot, you might want to quote the Space Falls joke for Moku Moku Ren. No, no, please no! Ah, that! Yes. Yes. That. No. Ah! <laughs> uh, we kid because we care. Anyways, moving on. Fly thing does. Exactly. So yeah, so he has teamed up with uh with Togeno Evez in order to um get his revenge on the Pato Rangers. In which it starts off with uh a random guy running from from to get from Togeno, who yeah, it's kind of obvious that 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 guy is uh is uh um Odor um Odor Odordo. Like, let's be honest. He's wearing here. wool. He's wearing yeah, wool. Yeah. He is wearing and it's white. May. Yeah. So wait, 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 wait. Would you wait? Hold on. Would you say he was a lamb to the slaughter? 
Or wait, no, that would be his brother. God damn it. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that was what they were going for. You know, in the fact that they're both, both, both sheep. Actually, uh, actually they're both sheep. alpaca. They're alpaca. Eh, same difference. Uh, no, alpaca are completely different. Have you not seen the Emperor's New Groove? I'm sorry, it's just the wool, wool basically they threw me off. Okay. Silva? Uh, Silva? Yes? Who would have ever? What? Oh, he said pull the lever. Right. Pull the lever. Wrong lever! Let's be fair on the whole wool thing. When has Japan ever really cared about realism? Realism! Yeah. You know, he's got a point. Holy alpaca monster that's part of an interdimensional mafia? Well, I think we passed sensibilities a few stops back. Exactly. That anyways. is true. Anyway, so, as thanks. Zoidberg, as Zoidberg invites uh, 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 our, uh, the, the mafia boss to watch as he attempts to win. Yep. I, more like a. We kill, kill a cop. Yeah. I and loved his grass. response. Sorry. I loved the granule's response to when he brings it up. It's basically, you want me to get out of this chair? Stuff? Why? One thing I will give overtime credit is the fact that this is, the, is what is their translation of one of the granule's lines. This seat doesn't come cheap, capiche? capiche? Hang on, we're not on that part yet. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We still need to I give felt... Kichiro the drill. Yeah. Right, right, so... So, Kichiro so... gets a drill. So, you know the drill. God damn it. Um, and also... So... Turns out our sniper guy has a mean spike. Hang on! Hang on! We're not we at that part yet. I was making a pun. God damn it. Uh... You made Dave win ready. All or right. Slipper win ready. Anyways. <laughs> Our, uh, Zoidberg is an assassin. Gang war. Yep. Anyways. So, as I was saying, um, so, I cannot speak today, blah, um, hey. so, Keiichiro is like, we need to, we need to stop this now, and while he does give a rather dumb reason for, for, for why, there's actually a good reason behind that, but we'll get to that in a second. So, basically, so yeah, he so yeah, he basically says those kids are those kids need to go on their field trip. That is our job. And which I'm kind of just shaking my head being like, "Hey Shiro, why why do you do this?" In regards he, to that, he is good this cheesy. Is, this this is this is why people can't take you seriously. Anyways, sorry. So so Keiichiro goes goes in as Patsurai Nichigo and goes with the drill, because he knows the drill. God, I'm going to keep making that joke, aren't I? Yes, you are. Anyways, however, he ends up having a vision of his past, in which we find out the reason why he is so, he is so adamant on making sure that these kids get their field trip. Don't you and just love the ba Don't you just love the backstory dimension? And plus, this actually, yes, the lovely this actually and plus this also, um, this also helps, um, this also helps, um, show the reason why Keiichiro became a cop in the first place. As very much, very much like the kids in grade school, he also had his field trip canceled. Due to somebody in the mountains, uh, 
I don't know. It was some sort the, of the, the park criminal. I think it was yeah. a serial killer or something. Or yeah, and no, I think it was a mugger actually. Yep. Or a play park. Yep. And so, so Keiichiro, not wanting a stand for this, wants to go in there, but a policeman stops him. Does this policeman look familiar to you? Anybody else see Eric? Eric who? From, Eric from Time from Force. Time Force. Oh, uh, yeah, kind of. Well, actually, this policeman <clears throat> is actually played by Patsuna Ichigo's actor, or, or suit actor. Uh, oh! Masashi Takeda, or Masashi Takada. Oh, okay, that's that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, that's really cool. He, actually, he's they actually, a relative new they actually get a suit actor for a moment thing. in the spotlight. Good for them. Yeah. It, something, Which something, uh, something, something, um, uh, uh, um, what was it? Something, something, uh, what, uh, dang, now I'm blanking on his name. Uh, his name? Uh, something. Yeah. But yeah, for for those who are wondering, um, oh now I remember who uh, Takata has has portrayed. Uh, he's mainly been doing um, he's mainly been doing Blue Rangers and Sixth Rangers. However, recently he got promoted to actually doing Red Rangers, in which he I'm did. Not trying Yep, Patron Ishigo and Shishi Red. Beforehand, he did Zuo of the World and Star Ninja. And then before that, he did all of the Blue Rangers. Uh, since Gokai Blue. He has actually oh. had a few appearances before this and as well. Now I, remember, now I remember what I was going to say because I checked the wiki. Something, something, Seiji to Kaiwa, something, something. KG, why did you have to waste your opportunity in the spotlight on Ghost? Good yeah. question. The answer is yes. Also, uh, uh, DJ, just a little fun fact for you. See, the granny was so actor, it's a female. Oh. Yep, I looked up, it's a female so actor. Anyways, so... So, yeah, um, basically... Um... The cop ends up catching the, uh... Ends up catching the criminal, although he got a uh, he got a little uh, cut on his cheek. Hey, at least it's better than him actually dying. Yeah, but yeah, just that's actually really good backstory for Keiichiro. Oh my god! Yeah, like, well, that's actually pretty good. That backstory actually sounds vaguely familiar. I swear I've seen it in another Toku somewhere. Top of my head. But yeah, overall, pretty good. Pretty good backstory. And then Keiichiro gets shot in the back. Huh, yeah, this guy has a mean spike. Familiar. Mm. Yeah. But you, know, but you may be asking, how did uh, Keiichiro get shot in the back? When he was in a drill. Alone. Well, that's well. where... That's where Togeno Aves is, um... Lupin collection question. comes in. Le petit monde. Quick question: Does anyone have God, an Akbar I actually on hand? have a. And thank God, I actually have an easy Lupin collection to to pronounce. My God, it is also very easy to we're not allowed to say the English monde. name. Why? Disney is always watching. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Anyways, so. Le Petit Monde allows the user to shrink in size. So the Like Ant Man? Like what? Like Ant Man. Uh like I guess. Yeah, like Ant Man. Okay, now I kinda wanna see the path the, the uh Lupin Rangers actually use this thing. Because Because be cool. it's obvious that um that uh the <clears throat> That the gold chrono changer could actually give super speed to somebody. 
just it wasn't yeah. used because it was swapped out to, for a fake. Yeah. But it's that like... one's easy, just put it on your wrist. Exactly. But how would the other Lupin collections like work in conjunction with the, the VS changers? And why are they so radically different from the rest of the uh, collection, I wonder? Also, one thing is that this does this does prove that the Gengar, yeah, they can use the VS vehicles just as they could any other piece of a Lupin collection. However, we don't know what the VS vehicles would do in them because, well... Squish. Does anyone want? Uh, does anyone want uh, p flat burgers? Cause that sheep was minced. You wonder how our packet tastes. Oh god! Oh god! Uh, um, DJ, I'll give you a hint. It tastes just like lamb. Anyways, <laughs> meanwhile with the Lupin Rangers, they end up getting the yeah, drop on. Sure on Ordardo, and also the password number, 404. Error. A, Lupin collection not found. As a computer science guy, I love that. I love that so much. That Wait, so I didn't or, know did that. you want to say that line instead of me? I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No worries, it's fine. But yeah, for those who don't know, oh, error code 4, 404 is when you can't find something. And it's really funny if you type in 404 and it says, error code 404. 404 cannot be found. Yeah, I've, I've got what's the, uh, the numerical equivalent to dyslexia. That's fun. Discra dysgraphia? Yeah, that. I've got them both. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, I... Why do you think I bungle up so many of my memes, even though I triple check them? Hmm. Uh, trying, I don't use that as an excuse, that's just a reason for. Gotcha. Anyways. Yep, sorry. So yeah, the, there's no looping collection, and then... Um... And then, very foolishly, um, Tegeno just throws his away so that he can get away. Which that one? Which the which um, actually kind of ironic. They threw away a, a collection piece, even as the repainted it an shuriken from the ninja. Which I, I, again, is it just me or does that thing look like it's made of chocolate? 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 Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, who are you? Yes. As the most experienced with uh, with role playing, should uh, should the rogue ever throw away equipment like that? Um, depending on what kind of equipment it is. But if it's his if it's his main if it's his main gimmick, then no. I just say so something that I think would be utterly so hilarious. STUPID! You're so stupid! Well, I mean, Tang, well, I think his main, his main power is poison darts, and the Lupin collection just gave him a little bit of an, an edge, pun intended. Hey, yeah, that's why you did, well, you, mean, said gotcha. of, you said the name of that collection piece was Le Petit Monde, yes? Yeah. The Little World. Yeah, yeah, it's a small world after all. Oh, there goes, and there goes know, our demonetization. You know what would make that joke even better? If it was instead of a nin shuriken, it was in fact a Qtama, which is shaped like the planet. Oh ah, my god. That would have been great. And, that that, that and would have been brilliant. Like, I, I would have loved that. Him, it could be I think it's just a middle too finger up to Qtama. Oh wait. The, the microscope Qtama. Yeah. That could, and him tossing it away all casually like that could be just like what I think them doing it to an insurican. Just a big middle finger to one of their worst shows. Yeah. Also, um, Although this does make me yes. wonder. If he, if, he get, yes. if, he, if he ended up getting destroyed while Can he was tiny, done? and then he got grown back with Gosh, would he be normal-sized? 
Um, We've seen that before. Hi, <laughs> go, Busters. Also, also, hi, Q Ranger. Also, um, so good. You could say that he used this piece of the Lupin collection to get his point across. Thank you. Oh, God. Anyway, so basically, inside the drill machine, while it was still small, he put a he put it he put a thing that would shoot poison spikes at um at he put um, a he put a dark hero. trap in the in the drill. Yep, and thus Cage Hero has been poisoned and is slowly dying. <coughs> what? what? He has but the plague. Stop. But that's gonna stop. Fuck no. Yeah. Also, holy shit, Cage Hero able to last that long. Cause he he falls unconscious for a, for a little bit, but then he ends up coming back. He he ends up um he ends up coming back to his senses and then decides to continue the mission. My God, this guy is a badass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is a Cage Hero's. I am a man. Earn your red senshi stripes moment. Exactly. So, so any help away has a funny moment during all of that when he and Jim were listening in on that. Screamed out something in English, I think. I guess funny. he did. To be fair, no, no cage at all. No, cage at all. <laughs> something in this episode that I think bears mention. They said where the global police headquarters is located. In France. Paris. Huh. I wonder if I wonder if um I wonder if uh the global police have been been dealing with a lot of evilized villains over there. And I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. They've got a ladybug and cat thing. I thought you were taking I thought you were it. off your miraculous kick. I'm sorry, it was too easy. <laughs> go to your room. Uh, fine, I'll go to the that. black hole. No way. No! So they forced me here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just waiting for them to remember their mistake. And it, I'm back. You're the one who who's recording. Plus, I just <laughs> remembered something else. Silver, you don't need to go to the black hole. Because I'm back home. Wait, what? Oh, uh... no. Where's my metal memory? Where's my metal memory? <laughs> shoot him! Shoot him now! I One did. shot. I just, just had a, I had a moment of genius. There I we go. I, I think I might have an idea who could be the head of the global I police. I think I shielded. Thing. Wait. The I, 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 I think I know who you're going to say. And then Arsene Lupin mm -hmm. is the head of the global police. Oh. No, Lupin. Arson Lupin has his own police rival. A Zinigata. guy known as Gunny Mard. It's Zinni Gata. Well, I have a. Well, this. Aha! Uh -huh. Lupin! God damn it. Who's I am surrounded by me? weirdos, ladies and gentlemen. It didn't go into the opposite line of the business because that happens in real life. Indeed. So, anyway. Yeah, but... With the, yeah. Back with the Potter Rangers, they, they fight the two gangler while they finally meet the big cheese. Yeah, Don't I found it. Inspector Justin Gunnymard, I think. Oh, is it a Lupin's meant to be Zenigata? That's Lupin the Fart. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, sorry, yeah, that's okay. Lupin the Fart. That's probably Lupin the Third or something. Yeah. No wait, yeah, no wait, this is, no wait, it is the correct thing. Gunnymard is the arch enemy of uh, Arsene Lupin. Anyways, come on guys, gotta keep on topic. Yes. So, yeah, so the, so yeah, the, the, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so the Pato Rangers are going two on two, and we finally get to see somebody else other than Keichiro using the using the um using biker. the machine biker. Finally, well, Silver, you got your wish. 
Yep. Congratulations, Sakuya. You have graduated from being butt monkey to slightly more powerful butt monkey. And then the granio goes messy. Feeling like going into big point. Yeah. The, granio, the granio uses silk and uses razor wind. It's super effective. Wait, is wait, should it be razor wind or silver wind? Because I'm pretty sure silk because razor wind is a normal time move and silver wind is a bug time move and ah, uh, whatever. No! Never. Um, Critic. guys, the Papa Rangers never saw it come, man. God damn it, kill you. That's Wait, a well. double pump. James, I think there's a James Bond joke in there somewhere. Also, so, so, so well, that was a double pun. Get it? Saw. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, oh wait, my wait, god. Wait, 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 wait. That's saw. it. Black hole. Wait, 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 wait. Saw. Want to play a game? No. <laughs> Let us not bring up any sort of freaking. Jigsaw referencing. Anyways. Take anyways, Dogranio ends up taking his leave, and Ghost is like, how about you go and redeem yourself? And right before Sakuya and, and Tsukasa are going to get stomped, which is actually kind of fitting, if you think about it. Poetic justice! However, poetic justice is denied by the crane. The claw. Tweet, 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 tweet. Huh? Crane. Oh. Flipping Rangers oh. have their own equivalent to the uh, scissors dial fire. Oh, oh, wait. oh, wait. I just remembered a rock. Wrong joke. I should have said, and then suddenly Sirahime arrived. <laughs> oh, if only. I get it. I don't get it. Sirahime is, is a ninja, ninja white, and one of and one of her. Oh mechs right, is a right. I didn't hear you properly. Sorry. Japanese birthday. It's fun. Fun. Anyways. Anyways, Keijiro pretty much goes all ham on this guy. Also, Keijiro, you don't look so good. Always, Kami. And no, I was not trying to make an Infinity War reference there, guys. Could have fooled me. I was, I was saying that he doesn't look so good. Oh, you no, I, I got what you meant. I was being serious I there. It, ah, dude looks it, like he got the plague. But instead of fading away, Keichiro just it, collapses. Hang on, we're or, not at that point yet. Oh yeah, he first gives a beating with crane and drill foo. Yep. Yeah. Also, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but this monster here is pathetic. He he's getting his ass kicked by a fucking drill and a crane. Oh, can you me? Also, Whoa. also, who the hell do you think I am? So, Diobot, you could say when he was destroyed by the drill, he was screwed. No, no wait, 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 I got a better, better one. Screw you! Well, I got a better one compared to that. This is the and drill that will pierce the heavens! Giga! Toriel! <laughs> I, I, I got one a little bit more appropriate considering the situation. Oh, dream! What? No thing going on as well. Oh! I get it. Wait, what was it exactly? Sorry. Uh, DJ Tokyo, you keep cutting in and out. Connection's a wee bit laggy. Yeah. Well, what'd you say? I made a reference to a uh, guy's finishing move from Gokaiger. The triple drill dream? Yeah. That one, yes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. 
But yeah, unfortunately, Cage Hero collapses as the poison's definitely taken its toll on him. And this leads into next ep next week's episode. Will Cage Hero live, or will he die? He's gonna live. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no shit. Hey, something for a supposed master assassin that Togero apparently is, how does his poisons not just kill you outright? He's bad at the He's bad at his job. Yeah. Well, he was probably thinking that Keiichiro wouldn't um wouldn't have been able to make it to the to the crane trigger machine, or didn't know that the crane trigger machine was there in the first place. So just wanted to leave him alone in a drill to die. Well, actually, I think they needed the crane drill, uh, the crane trigger machine to get down there, so that way Keiichiro would get in the in the drill. No, okay. Here's my theory. Remember when? Remember when? Uh, Annie Daria got stomped into the ground. Yeah. What was with Annie Daria when he got stomped into the ground? And the crane. crane his crane exactly so maybe he, it maybe it made its way under the mountain and then for some reason grew bigger <coughs> honestly it's kind of confusing honest, that's honestly what i thought if you but allow me to share it's very it's a very weird thing of how the crane got in and out of the mountain yeah Totally. Right. Anyway, anyway, uh, did you tell you said you had a theory, Carl? Um, the spikes with whatever machine they were connected to, they were set to fire when Kate Shiro got to a set depth. You know, oh. far in enough that he that he can't turn around and go back, but too far away from the from the crane. Practically speaking, the poison should have killed him before he got there. Their bloody stubbornness that Keiichiro was able to hold on for as long as he did and get to the crane. Yeah. Okay, no, maybe, maybe, have Cage, you like a... maybe maybe he, you know what? I got it. I know what I know why why he why he was uh resistant to the poison. He's got nerves of steel. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> For those who don't get it, boo, boo this man! Boo! For those who don't get the joke, Steel type is is immune to poison type attacks in Pokemon. Uh, we already used up our Pokemon joke with Razor Wind. Well, too bad. I'm the one who makes the rules around here. <laughs> I basically say, screw the rules. I have authority. Okay, Cartman. I was making a kind of a joke. You could also say, "Screw the, screw the rules." I, I have miraculous. God damn it, guts! Actually, no. Screw the rules. I have Gaia memories. Yeah, that's what. That was my second option. Or my first option. Besides, I don't actually have uh. I don't actually have any of the Miraculouses, although, considering I'm planning to go to a convention in August with my girlfriend, and we're planning on cosplaying as Marinette and Adrian, eventually I might have my own Miraculous. Bring that up. I just had a, a, a joke pop into my head. Oh dear. Upon Black, with the Scissors Dial Fighter. Oh. Aren't isn't there a, a loop in black already set in the first changer? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well we'll see oh, what yeah. happens. Yeah, 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 there is a loop there is a there's a pattern zero go and oh, and a pattern minus each go as well. Part of me thinking in there that, too? Part of me's thinking that minus Ichigo is going to be the dark version of Ichigo, whereas Zero Go is Commander Hilltop. That's what I think too. He'll basically be the Deca Master of uh, of uh, of the Pato Rangers. If he even shows up. Yeah. Who knows? Mm. 
Anyway, <laughs> no. yeah. Anyways, I give this episode an A. Just a solid A. Me too. Agreed. Eh. A minus for me. The episode was just really well done. It covered a bit of Keiichiro's backstory. And it was just overall a relatively good story. And I can't wait to see what happens in part two. And part, part two, two we, get, we, get two, we get two things that happen. Number one, the return of Patura and Yugo. And, and number three. And the second one, the, the debut of Pato Kaiser Strong. Or is it stronger? I, I don't know. It's Pato Kaiser Strong, but but I feel like if they put... Str- but I have a feeling that the upgraded version is Pato Kaiser Stronger. <laughs> but, yeah, can, can I just say something about our uh, character for a moment? Uh, sure. He kept going on about how this was for the kids, but can we all acknowledge that there was probably a a hidden selfish desire in all of that as well? Because this really all got kickstarted when that kid says, "I prefer the Phantom Thieves," and we know how he is about that. His pride. Yeah. He's a proud man. That's that of his job. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I'm not. I'm not lambasting the man for having a part of him that's selfish. That's perfectly natural. It shouldn't be like yeah. denied, but still, it's there, and they should at least acknowledge that. Yeah, I have a feeling that they, that they might acknowledge it next episode. Well, well, where, well they technically maybe, already maybe acknowledge. They already acknowledged Keichiro's stubbornness when it comes to dealing with the Lupin Rangers, episodes five and six. Uh-huh. I'm not but they can stubbornness, guys. I'm talking about his pride. Well, he does have a lot of yeah, pride. Yeah, sorry. They're not. But they could, all, they could. They could. They could do it one more time, as long as they don't overdo it. Anyways, let's move on to the weekly plug-in, in which for us it is DJ G- DJ Toku, who is apparently using the picture of Kusaka. Okay. Because, because, because he, because he wants to do that, because he can. That's fair. So, DJ Toku, what do you do? Nothing much, really. I mean, I stay at home and take care of my family. I mean, I've... In terms of fan content... Bugger all. Edit some wikis and all that. Oh, 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 so you, oh, so you basically we edit, we edit, had the wikis for a certain, for a certain and to, and Toku stuff like, uh, like uh, Kamen Rider wiki and such, pretty much. Not the Kamen Rider wiki though. That one's a little locked down. And mostly the Garo one. Oh, close enough. Yeah, it's one's good enough. Lot. Yeah. But that's as far as I go. I'm good interacting with people's and yet, here you are yep oh you know i've had, I've had it wasn't years my to... it wasn't my fault you ended up here i mean regardless we're glad to have you for the podcast and have you on the discord server so yeah Baby. makes me feel that i'm not the only scotsman i'll come out with my shell somehow yeah soon you might be creating videos on youtube mm-hmm. Like us. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that's around here that's Scottish. I think so far. I'm sad, but I think maybe yeah, so. yeah, it's good that we have the original Scotsman along with uh, the uh, uh, mighty Scotsman. Yep. So anyways, let's move on to the weekly topic, shall we? Let's. And this one, we're talking about rivalries in Toku. In which the one pictured is, of course, the most famous rivalry of all. Kamen Rider Black and Shadow Moon. Wait, hold on. What are you doing? Huh? He said, oh, Zeltrax right. Millennium, what are you doing here? Because <laughs> Zeltrax actually actually did a voice for Shadow Moon in, um, in Easy Rider's reviews. Yep. 
I didn't watch those <laughs> in particular episodes. Well, I watched one of them, probably. Also, Wolfhard, one more thing I have to ask you. Are you a brony? Ah! <laughs> I love that bit. That was, that was hilarious. That was a funny bit. Topic of the rivalry of the Satan Shitty Kings. You know what? It's kind of ironic the fact that the it's kind of ironic that the fact that I make that the time that I make that quote, our resident brony is not here. Ham. I meant flutter. Yes, guts. I know that. I know that. Well, wait, guts. Have you seen the show? I mean, I'm. I'm caught up on, on all the episodes. I missed a few in the earlier seasons, but I'm caught up. Well, yeah, I know that both you and I are bronies. Well, kind of. I haven't really watched the show since the end of season six, but... Flutter is the main brony in our group. <laughs> and kind of gives that away. I mean, it's pretty obvious given the fact that he's an Everfree. And the fact that his name is Flutter Guy. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's just that I don't, you know, don't write me off as dead yet. Dang it, I I referenced an injure. God damn it! Image in the black hole. Okay. Just, uh, oh, wait, actually no. Just... Actually no, you'll be fine. I mean, what? I just need to go grab myself. A I'll drink. just I'll just shoot myself with my own Sazer blaster. Anyway, so since DJ Toku's our guest, how about you go first with your pick for Toku uh, rivalries? Uh, yeah, that'll just, yeah, no, just be back in a moment. Oh, okay. Um, How's that plan? That's that's awkward. Uh, Kyoryu, you go ahead. Kyoryu. Kyoryu. Scotsman. Scotsman. Damn it, both oh. our Scotsmans are gone. Guts, you go! Okay. Wait, Kyoryu, you. you just made a noise. Kyoryu. Kyoryu, do, do you live? I was downstairs. Okay, do your, do your rivalry first. The Tokyo rivalries? Yep. Yes. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Try to think. Which ones have been covered? Uh, uh we not. just started. We haven't said anything. But you know which one I'm picking. Yes. You pick. You've got double Nasca. Hang on! Don't don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Spoil it. It's over as obvious for you. Uh, fine, then I might as well cover mine first. Yes, obviously I'm going to cover the rivalry that took place between Kamen Rider W and the Nazca Dopont. Well, to it, be more accurate, it was more Shotaro over, over yep. the Nazca Dopont. Yep, Shotaro versus Kirihiko. Because Kirihiko is an awesome character. Um, so yeah, it starts off with, with, uh, with W, well, initially when they first, sh when they first meet up with, well, when they first meet each other, it was during the Money Dopont. In which money. They... Money. We got money. Jeez. Anyways, however, the rivalry started to grow from there, mainly when mainly when they first fought, and Shotaro did something reckless in order to get the... in order to defeat Nazca. Overall, the... Fourth by reckless, or fourth by reckless would be awesome. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty reckless, yet at the same time pretty awesome. Anyways, they've had, they had a few bouts um, all around between the 19 episodes that... or actually, uh, 18 episodes that that Kirihiko appeared in. And, however, come the bird, Dopont, well, starting off with that episode of, 
or with that section with the bird Dopont. We see Kirihiko and Shotaro actually actually getting a, getting along when they're in the barbershop, but they can't see each other. And then they realize that it's the I, two I, of them. I honestly, I honestly love that bit because it's because it not only it's a funny, even a comedy in general, it shows that they have similarities, but it actually reveals that Kirihiko designed Butokun. Yeah. And Fujokun is, is a, a, actually, I can't even finish this joke. Now, now, during this episode, <laughs> Kirihiko is having some issues regarding, regarding the, uh, the use of, of Gaia memories on kids. On the morality of museum. Yeah, the morality of museum, and the fact that they gave this they gave this super this super powerful drug like weapon to a bunch of kids. Yeah. A bunch of jokers? No. Can I quickly ask a question in regards to this rivalry? Yes. Yeah. I'm the only one who thinks that Kirihiko was a bit of a wasted character. Oh, we'll get into that in a, in a second, okay? We'll get I disagree. Into that in a bit, okay? So, I disagree with that. Well, yeah, because well, yeah, because in the first in the first third of W, that he served as a foil to Shotaro, and he served as a, a very interesting villain and a very interesting obstacle for Double to overcome. Because yes, because the thing is, Kiriko honestly believes that believes that doing this is for the is for the better of Fucho, and Shotaro is all about how 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 projecting Fucho. So that is a interesting parallel. It's, they both want Fu want, want Fucho to be a better place. It's just they have different methods of doing so. Yep. So do you know what you could see is doing this for the greater good? Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, great. Shot it! Actually, wait, no. The Scotsman should say that. The greater good. The greater good. Good. Uh, kill you. Sorry. Do it, but I don't want to disturb the family. They're trying to sleep. Ah. But, but yeah, back unfortunately, on, back on track. unfortunately, this was where Kirihiko ended up sadly dying. Unfortunately, it was to make room for Ryu Teroi, but as as has been discussed multiple times on um on the Discord servers um in our spare time, they could have had both. Picture Agreed. this. Picture this. When when Kirihiku was lying there dying, a certain someone comes to pay him a visit. A certain shrouded woman who offers Kirihiko a lost driver and saying, Use this and become my knight. And thus comes Kamen Rider Nazca. Hell, they even got like a you've even got like a super form for him already lined up with Nazca Red. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I, mean, I feel that there were two reasons why they killed him off. Number one is obviously because uh, to make way for 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 for, 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 for but another Maybe it was because of the fact that the actor at the time time was busy. Maybe maybe that's the reason why he didn't show up that many times in Double, because he was busy doing doing other things trying to back it. In like maybe oh. possible other stage plays or plays or J drop. Plus I'm people... under the impression that uh, uh, Kiri, uh, that the Nazca Dopont lasted uh, the perfect amount. Uh, this the thing is, is guts. Well, yes, they ended in Kitty Eco. Oh, sorry, free, free at well, technically, 
ultimately the right point gave them the right amount of development. Our point is that they, there still was more they could work with. Exactly. And now that I, and now that I remember it, it better, you know, it's not uncommon for uh, you know, villains to get uh, their greatest moments of characterization in their final two episodes. True. Can I just say that Kirihiko didn't need to immediately become a writer? We could have, you know, let everyone think he was dead, even, you know, Psycho, and only later reveal that he was alive, like, maybe after Ryu got the trial upgrade, and his maybe, character development maybe, was complete, and then maybe, bring Kirihiko maybe, back, and then have a clash between the maybe, two or, or Maybe, maybe there was, maybe in the episode, Why is Tragedy? Maybe they, they, I don't know, hint at the fact that Kirihiko might be alive, and maybe he, they basically we sh- we show him him basically we see him his sister looking at his at his grave or whatever her and you and they pan up the camera to reveal yo yo not dead actually if you take <laughs> the Nazca Dopant's power set sure. and then convert them into a rider and then compare and contrast them to Axel they're actually opposing numbers. Axel is a red speed based, but Axel goes from red power to even blue faster. While Kirihiko and Nazca, it's the opposite. They lose less, they lose more speed when they go red, but they gain a massive increase in power. Oh, you're right. That, and they're both that, primarily sword fighters too. Yeah. Our point is that. Uh, there could is that well yes Nazca had a good end there could have been more exactly so anyways but, uh, let's but, have but then our... again Nazca's Nazca's ending characterization is just a frequent problem in toy in, in toy stuff that you know, Nazca was just a victim of but he still got really good ending characterization oh yeah tell yeah let me let me phrase it this way. The story of the Nazca Dopont had run its course, but the story of Common Rider Nazca was a potentially interesting one to write. But Toei didn't think of that and thus missed opportunity. Say well, la, say well, la, be. Well, to, well, to be fair, it's not all, all Toei to blame, remember. Or, or the reason and why that happened because Rick. Uh, Riku Sanjo isn't good at working with big cats, so this is also away from the clear. Clear the plate. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Also, I want to bring this up real quick, and I've mentioned it multiple times on the podcast. When I went to the Q and A panel for Ren Kiriyama at Japan World Heroes, he had mentioned that he had formed quite a he had formed quite a fond friendship with um. With Kirihiko's actor, uh, hang on, let me figure out, I forgot Kirihiko's actor's name, one second. Kirihiko... I just had a thought. Um... Still ongoing. Yuki, Yuki, eh, Yuki Kimisawa. Well, his name's Yuki. Yes. Is the, is the double manga still ongoing? I believe mm-hmm. it is, yeah. There's a potential story for them. Yeah, I, I, I actually mentioned that before. I honestly think that double mock is where they, they could possibly be, maybe be bring back Akirito's maybe one off or maybe somehow revive him. Who knows? Anyone? Also, Silver, you should date me. There was no body. Why? Never mind. You keep. Oh. Station X has the technology. Yeah! Oh. Oh, I just had a thought. What if they turned... turned what, what if they turned Nazca into a necro over... Oh, shit. I, I said that too, but then I remembered. Kirihiko didn't leave a body. Uh, yeah, yeah he did. In the dust no, he something. faded away. Into dust. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyways, DJ Toku, your turn. 
we discussed this earlier. I brought up the whole uh, rivalry between uh, Shiba Takeru and uh, Ju and Juzo from Shinkanger, but I remembered one I like even more. Ooh. Ryuga Dogai, the Garo of the Yami Wotorosa Monoline, eh. and Jenga Nuea, his most fantastic. Oh! oh Dialbot, can I say it? Go ahead. Honore This is all Decade's fault. That's right. That's right. Oh, hi, Unc. <laughs> Anyways, go right ahead. Their rivalry was different than any other rivalry between Agaro and a Dark Knight we've seen in the franchise as a whole. Like season one, Koga and Barago. Lara is yes, but ultimately at the end of the day, there was too major a difference. Same with Sigma in Makai Senki and Yami Wotrasimo. But Goldstorm, Jenga is the purest case of a dark reflection of any of Makai Knight. Because from what we see of him in flashbacks and in Makai Retsuden, like Yuga when he was human. The loss of his son that are and become in every single way. This undercurrent of tragedy to it all because, and that's the reason I think it's better than Juzo because oh, when Takeru is trying to appeal to Juzo's better angels, there was none. Juzo knew fully well the of that sword, and he didn't care. Jenga's dark actions can be lain at his son's death. Juzo was a monster named Agidoshu. Monster after a point of no return. So it's honestly. Wow. That's deep. That is deep. We, we've seen Masahiro Inoue do many different performances. As Decade, he's this kind of training peacock, to be honest. But and he's, he's, when he, he's a snarky snarky asshole, but low. I'm snarky asshole. And when yeah. he's Jenga for most of the show, he's this mad cackling homicidal maniac. But when we see his backstory, we learn that underneath all of that, we remember always um, dive on vice. Sometimes it's people that have gone past to the point of despair. And more or less a phantom, basically. And that is, I see it's borderline Shakespearean, honestly. Yeah. That definitely does uh, get me excited to see he, he gold store. So yeah, like, that was, uh, that was, uh, bleh. That, that was, uh, Jenga and the, what was his name, Ryuga? Yeah. <clears throat> Nice. So next up, let's have Kyoryu go. I'm actually struggling to think of a rivalry that actually came to the light. Well, I'll, go, no I'll go I'll next, go next so that way you have more time to think, okay? Is that okay? Mm hmm. Although, beware that if any of your smoke alarms go off, it's because I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of uh, tokusatsu rivalries because uh, many of them I, uh, either get boring or uh, take up spotlight or uh, uh, they're just not, uh, not very interesting. Yeah, and they end up dragging, uh, and they can either enhance a show or bring it down. 
I I can't speak too much to the Garo rivalry, but the Nazca and W rivalry was great because even though most of the characterization for Kiri and Hiko, I, I forgot his name, honestly. Kiri Hiko, yeah. Kiri Hiko came around the end. But a rivalry that had a little more build-up as it was happening, on the other hand, was with it was Soma Harto and Yugo, aka Wizard and Phoenix. Oh, oh. oh. Now I'm not the biggest uh, fan of Wizard. It's a little it gets a little dry, a little monotonous. But this one but this rivalry was a uh, uh, was a fight between uh, Haruto and uh, and Phoenix uh, no uh, uh, no dawdling with you know, Rinko and Shunpei. This was uh, Haruto. Uh, this was Haruto's fight against an unkillable foe. Uh, 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 Phoenix uh, uh, was crazy. He craved fighting, and uh, and every time you you took him. And every time you defeated him, he'd just come back stronger. This was a great rivalry. Even if the pacing was a little off sometimes, and Phoenix didn't really do much in a few battles, it was a, it was a splendor to watch. You know, Phoenix ham up the sta- ham up the the scenes he was in, yeah, you know, and and act like a ravenous you know, wild dog, you know, itching you know, to keep fighting. And then Phoenix got kicked into the sun. How the hell does that work? Magic. Shut up, you weirdo. No, wait, wait, wait. I got there. I got. I got a bear. Air, air, fall. It's magic. You don't have to. Damn it! I'd say that honestly, Haruto he beat Phoenix anyway because uh, word of God confirms that in like ten thousand years or so, Phoenix is going to be so powerful that anymore, and it's probably just going to go boom. Oh God! So in other words, it's a that's that sort of Phoenix being in the gun in the sun. That's a temporary. Yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, well. Then again, by the time Phoenix comes down from the sun, Haruto and potentially Haruto's grandkids will be dead, uh, so there won't be anybody for Phoenix to fight. I'll just kill random people. <sighs> what else? It, the only other way you could uh, uh, defeat Phoenix would be to contain him, as if you can't kill your foe, you have to contain them. Well, that's kind of what they did. No. They contained him I in the sun. They contained him in the sun's orbit. No, the idea of putting him in sun. space, but he picked the wrong spot. You should have kicked him in a deep space where he had no momentum to do anything because... First of all, if he doesn't hit anything, he'll just keep going and going and going until he hits something, preferably millions of light years away. He ends up hitting the Hellheim planet. Uh, but, him. but the point is, uh, that rivalry was, uh, uh, that rivalry was, uh, well, not, uh, well, not at. It was a it was a gold spot in the wizard, which had a lot of dryness mm. and monotony. I I personally don't agree with that guts, but that's a topic for another day. Hey, uh, Scotsman, and to give you more time, uh, I can go next. I mean, yeah, but during my during uh. 
I did kind of, I have one, but I don't know if any of you guys have actually seen the show I'm talking, going to be talking about. Well, we, well, none of us see Team, team Garo Goldstorm real, really, and DJ was able to say his, yeah, so... And I haven't seen Wizard, so... Uh, okay, I'm going to be... I'm kind of going to be shooting a dart at a blank wall. Ryu Kendall versus Jackman. Oh, I've seen that oh, one. Oh, that one! That makes sense. Um, guys, for some reason I can't hear Q. Ryu Kendo and Jack Moon. Yeah. Can you can you <clears throat> DJ, can you can you not hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Don't know why why uh why DJ can't. The rest of you, but can you turn on three lights? Better. I can hear you now. Uh, I can still hear. Sure. I can still hear. Yeah, I need you. Can you hear? So basically, you have Liu Kendo, the stereotypical what warrior of justice. He believes in trying to humans. And then you have Jack Moon, a surprisingly chivalrous villain. He wanted Liu Kendo to get stronger to beat him. He actually, you know cared enough to be like oh Rekendo's weakened because of a monster attack I'm gonna let him rest get stronger we had multiple climatic fights between these two and when eventually Rekendo did kill him he got a warrior's grave the amount of respect these two showed for each other no. unrivaled and at the very end of the show where they had the Christmas special at the end of the show, Jackman was brought back, and they had another climatic battle, basically to see how much they've improved. And it kind of blew. It was basically a retread of the final fight they had before. And you get to see how you get to see how affected uh, Rukendo is when. Jack Moon is brought back as Mechani Moon when he he starts getting angry at a certain character for basically dishonoring the death of a warrior. Baron Bloody. Oh. oh. Yep. Oh, 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 you mean oh you mean oh you mean oh you mean Mega Scarecrow. Yep. Okay. Also Oh, Dishonor! Dishonor on you, Dishonor on your cow! Dishonor! Dishonor on your whole family! Dishonor on you! Brilliant. Dishonor on your cow! Dishonor- Okay, I'm done. Yeah. It's actually a pretty simple way to describe both these guys. Yeah, Who is the traditional white knight? Yeah, uh, Jack white knight Moon is the dark knight. knight. Yeah. I'm Batman. Another. Uh, I was gonna say- I was gonna say- yeah. Dark Knight. That's Marvel, not DC. Not really. But yeah. So yeah, that's Jack Moon and Ryu Kendo. So last but not least, we have the Bot. All right. This one's a bit of a curveball because it's not really one you hear talked about out a lot. I could go with the classic Bosco Ho versus. Is marvelous for Andre versus his Yamato, oh, or Juzo versus his Takaru. No, 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 no. Now, once again, for this, we turn to Wizard. And this is something that may surprise Wait, a minute. Wait I think I know where you're going. Guts, don't spoil. This is about the rivalry between not not a hero and a villain, but rather two villains who were essentially on the same side. Oh. Oh. This is, this is, I'm talking about a rivalry between Wise Man, or rather, Wakey, and Ramblin. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't describe that as a rival, more of a splinter. 
Thoughts on that one a wee bit. It's less of a rivalry and more Gremlin using his Starscream credentials. I think the rivalry is more yeah, Gremlin than Medusa. Yeah, that's actually fair, Dio. All right, fine, fine, fine. fine. Then, I'll go, then I'll go with, with uh, Fawaki. He, he hurts his heart. Okay, though, though I do feel that this one... Uh, what's that in the background? Okay, uh, that's my that's my dad messing in the Google Hall. Uh, can you tell him to stop, please? Sure. Okay, Google room lights to seventy percent. I think I think he's I think he's good for now. Okay. Now, so uh, Andy. Anyways, Galebot, isn't it cheating to use a main here in his final villain? Yeah, that is kind of cheating. All right, all right, all right. Why not choose one from Power Rangers? We haven't done one from Power Rangers yet. You know, you, you know, you gotta put... Ooh, ooh, I got well, it. I've got, I've got another one. And you... <laughs> let's let, yes, let's let the Elbot handle this. Uh, all right, well... Well, here's... Well, here's one that I... You have to, have to ask about. Um... Does 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 Frax and Frax does Frax and Rancic from Time Force count as a bit of a robbery? I mean, mm -hmm. mm. the mm. no. But fine, 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 fine. I know, I know. All right, Zoltrax versus versus Tom. Oh there yes. There, there, there. Wait. Better. Wait. Why does ZM have an issue with Tommy Oliver? The actual Zeltrax, not Zeltrax <laughs> Millennium. I know. I was just making a joke. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> versus Tommy. Actually, that kind of would actually would be kind of like to see. I wanna see that. Anyway, uh, but also I should yeah. make the quote. Smitty, revenge isn't the answer. It's the only thing that keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I honestly think that out of the, out of all the rivalries from the Disney era, I think that Zelt, Max and Max and Max and Tommy had had probably one of the best ones. Indeed. It wasn't because the thing is, it wasn't really. The, Obvious, so it's something that's slowly built up. It wasn't until later where you learned Zeltrak's backstory. Hi, Thomas Smith. Now, people, now, one thing I want to bring up is Linkar basically brought up up, up questioning why, why Zeltrax was mad at Tommy. I sort of equated to two things. One, the one all the cybernetics drew him, drew, drove him insane, and number two, he was jealous because of the fact that, because of the fact that not only was he did Kami basically get a job that was more successful than him, but I think that what he what what happened was he also saw it as a betrayal of well the two of them working together. He moved. He moved on to better things, but at the, in the process, he kind of left Smitty behind. We don't know how long the two who, who had been friends for, but if they, but if they were friends for friends for as long as they implied, honestly, we yeah, it would make sense about the fact that act that. That Smitty would be angry at Tommy, and why wouldn't he consider him a friend anymore? Because in his mind, he basically he left him for dead. Yep. Fair enough. It's a twisted perception, yes, but yes, but when you think about it, it makes sense. And again, the cybernetics probably are they are what contributed to it. It might have started off as not exactly. 
be something as bitter, but something he was a little upset about. But the cybernetics basically were basically drew Robert to the tipping point of I want to kill kill him. Exactly. And honestly, the the, the thing with Zeltrax was not only did he have a cool design, but he was impossible to kill. Yeah. He Tommy crashed crashed him with an basically crashed an airship with him inside it. He still you know, lives. Lives. Tommy basically Lee, Lee, blo Lee blows him up inside of us. I have a sword. He still lives. This motherfucker can t or takes the liquor and keeps on ticking. He lasted until the second to last episode. Well, actually, technically, he lasted for it for like the whole series. As remember, part 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 one ended with him basically taking Elsa away. Oh yeah. So yeah, Zoltrek lasted for about as long as Mesagog or anybody else did, and that is impressive. That is impressive. And the and the thing. Was it wasn't really just the whole thing about out their past that basically was what got Odd Zeltrax to be so angry at Tommy. It was also oh, the fact that fact that he, that he also was implied to have a crush on us on Elsa. He basically Lee killed Lee killed Zeltrax's, for lack of a better term, son. All all of that that's had done by one person that yeah, you would definitely be a mass a huge hatred. And then yeah. there was the fact that that Zeltrax X here in America got a fucking super form. Oh, yeah. oh, that was Amer that was American exclusive. Far as I know, yeah. I think it was, yeah. Actually, it reminds me how much development does his counterpart in Ava Ranger get again? Uh, I don't remember. I, didn't know. I think he was. I think he was Oscar's brother-in-law, but that's as far as I remember. Are you sure he went into his deep that he wasn't his father's, the brother's, his nephew's, cousin's, former... Yes, yeah, brother-in-law. I'm looking up the armor of darkness right now. Well, it was a suit of armor worn by multiple people. Um, let's see. It was originally worn by Asuka, and then uh, the... It was worn by the dark by, um. Yeah, it was worn by his brother-in-law for like the first two episodes. I personally feel the feel that uh, Dino Thunder kind of did it better because, uh, yes, uh, yes, a an evil armor is bad, but honestly, the fact that they just make a Zeltrax himself. Evil and basically a cyborg honestly makes sense not only in terms of the theme for the show, but in terms of design. That does not look like armor. That looks like a fucking cyborg. Yeah, exactly. Rival rival rings can be good or bad. Some of them can be as great as uh, uh, Bosco and uh, uh, Bosco and uh, Marvelous and and. Hayate uh, and Shalinda, while others can be as uh, bad as. Got to right though versus his leftovers. Exactly. exactly. Oh, 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 and, and not only only that, there are times when the rivalries can end in disappointment. Like for example, oh, the rivalry of Bang Ray and Yamato. Oh, and then there was also oh, the fact that Leftovers pretty much stole the kill, kill for kill between the round with he was he was Mangetsu and Kasumi. No, I am not letting that go. That's fair. Now there is one final rivalry that I would like to bring up from a from a Common Rider series that we all hold dear. Common Rider okay. Gaim Kota versus Common Rider Baron. 
Kaito. Oh. Uh, to be fair, I haven't finished. Uh, I haven't finished Gaim, and I'm not sure if I will. Plus, we've all had a chance to talk at this point. I know, I know, I know. But this one, I feel, deserves special mention. What do you guys think? I agree because the thing was, while it started off as a simple rivalry, it continues to evolve into something much, much more. Because okay, that's when you think you. about when you think about it. Kaito is pretty much a parallel to Kota. Very much so. And, and the thing was, there was their paths constantly diverged. As Kota got farther away from Yggdrasil, Kaito moved closer to it. As, as, as Kota moves closer to being a god, Kaito moves closer to being a demon. It's a fault to becoming a demon, but same death. So, yeah. Kota essentially becomes a paladin, whereas Kaito becomes an oathbreaker. Hmm. Uh, actually, actually, yeah, that kind of does. Especially yeah. given the fact that they're on the height. I would more say it's Kota becoming a case of the Messiah becomes basically the Antichrist. Yep. And of course, that this builds throughout the entire series and then culminates with the final battle. I, I honestly feel that that was one of the, can I one of the best parts. Wait, can I quote... Uh, yeah, 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 wait. Can I quote the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged uh, Gaim one-shot for Tiba? What about it? What they say during the final blow, uh, even though it's da- even though it's really dated. What? I don't. Uh, Team Poplio, bitch. What? Oh. Oh God. Well, okay then. Anyways, but, uh, so. <laughs> So you're Team Popio. Team Rowlet, son. Yeah, hell <laughs> yeah. Thing. No, Kota was Team Popio and Kaito was Team Litten. Oh. What about Team Rowlet? What about Team Rowlet? That wasn't in awesome. the video. Oh, I agree that Rowlet is awesome, but it's not in the video. <laughs> yeah, but um but- Okay, Rowan, can I... Rowan's still best out. Can I, uh, can I, can I speak? Yes, go ahead. Um, I like the fact that in Gaim, they kept giving us red herrings as to who the final enemy was going to be. First you thought, oh, it's going to be Takatora. And then, oh, no, it's going to be Ryoma. And then you thought, oh, no, it's going to be the Overlords. And then you thought, oh, it's going to be, be, be the Overlord King. And then... It's like, oh no, it's gonna be ready way. And, and no, it's gonna be Michi and he are no no no, it's gonna be real way again. And then and it turns out, out to be Kaito and you're like, what the hell? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Cross eyed. Oh no, I've um, gone cross eyed. Yeah. And that and and that and that is the story of Clown Rider Dime. Yep, just the, the overall... fact that they were able to build up the rivalry between Kota and Kaito while also slowly and subtly building up the final battle. I don't like God damn it, Scotsman. Damn it, Scotsman. Are we, are we done yet? Okay, that's it. Black Hulk, here are you? All right, all right, all right. But it was going, and as I was saying, the fact that they were able to slowly and subtly build up the rivalry between Kaito oh, and, oh, and Kota along with also so who, who the final big battle was going to be, I feel that was masterful. I it love the was. fact that we didn't know what the final enemy was, because it was, because it was, because you were unsure, because, because you saw that people would basically do anything for the gold, golden fruit. Yep. Honestly, it was really good. 
But yeah, I think we've talked enough about rivalries. I could list off at least two or three more different rivalries. But, yeah. It's time for the keyword puzzle. Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have our keywords as per usual. You all know the rules to all of this. You know, three guesses per week. Use the honor rule. Even though most people only really give one guess for some reason. Come on, guys. You can well, give... You can give three guesses in the same in the same comment. Well, to be well, to be fair, I don't think we get many uh, commenters guessing. That's fair. That's fair. Anyways, let's move on to the keyword, shall we? Kensei o hajimoka. Totsume no keyword. Right. Sorry, let me go. Yep. The the keywords are hybrid, traitor, and medical. And I'm the one who picked this one out, so go ahead and guess your votes. Or something like that. What's the second mm. one? Traitor. Crater. Traitor. Hybrid. Traitor. Medical. Mm. Okay. It, my, my, first, my first thought is because of traitor and medical that it could be medic from common or drive but that would be too easy because medical is in the uh, actual keyword title uh, so uh, that can't be it or could it three guesses you never know you you, you never know with me oh with oh with me hey, hey guys you, you should know better you can't really predict what exactly they are going to do you said three guesses yes Yes. Yep. Here's my three then. Um. Exit. Pardo. Nope. Kuroto. Nope. That's two guesses. Yeah. What is your final guess? Laser. Ah! Just, I, 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 I am sorry, Mr. Jojo, but you just lost the game. Uh, okay. Traitor. I'm going from Q-Ranger? Who? Who, 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 was, who was that again? Anton, Gurringer. Nope. Nope. Hmm. <coughs> mm. Hybrid, traitor, medical. <coughs> I think. Mm. That, I think that we stumped him, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I, the ring no. rider. Strikes again. Silver, might I remind you of your last two that were kind of bad? Shut up! Anyways... Whereas I have had a good streak. Let's just move on to the, to the endings. <laughs> I have been your resident Radiant Rider, Silver Maxis, telling you peace out, stay awesome, stand up to the vanguard, and await. Doomsday. This is your adventure of Egg Gutsmaster Sim saying, uh, uh, saying stay, uh, stay awesome. Uh, let me, uh, uh, let this me tell you. This connection isn't reliable at the moment. What the hell? Hey. What the hell? Are you? What the hell? Are you, you interrupted my ending. What the hell was that? 
I think it was Google. Yeah. A very anyway. British Google. This is Guts Masterson saying, "Stay awesome. Let me turn the valve and 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 stop giving me eggs." No, we're and taking read your eggs. And and read the books. Guts, we're taking your eggs. <laughs> okay, Anyways. Honey, stop! Stop taking my eggs. I need them. <laughs> For what? I thought you said you hated eggs. I still bake and I still like to bake and desserts. Fair enough. Go are you. This has been your crimson has I show your crimson. Stay frosty, people. <clears throat> this has been your, your real god here about twenty sixteen. Reminding you that I'm just a passing by Toku fan. Remember that, and please don't forget to praise our meme Lord God Dead, Roto. Oh, and tune in next week, we people. For, ne for next week, we have a special guest. Ooh. Well, I mean, we had a special guest this week. True, 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 true. true it. No, no offense to you, DJ. Uh, DJ. No offense to you. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're there. Alrighty. So, DJ, would you like to do your, uh, your, um, an outro saying of your own? As a matter of fact, this is DJ Toku, and it has been an absolute pleasure to join you guys this evening. Allons-y. <laughs> I like that. I, 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 I like that. Doctor Who reference, I approve. Alright. Well, anyways, guys, good night, everybody. Got it! Yeah.